Okay, hello and welcome. Can you guys hear me? Is everything good? Hello and welcome. Yeah, but you never, you never actually typed yeah. 30 seconds. Yeah, no, I didn't do it this time. <laughs> I was actually in the bathroom, so I, just, I, was, I was too late. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, hello and welcome to Season 2, Episode 11 of The Crackdown. Today we have Narmut on our uh, show here. Newly crowned Yo. LEC champion. Which I mean, I, I thought the the per perfect person to set this up would be would be Thorn because I mean you're you're really good at just like going into the history of things, and I'm sure that everyone had the same idea going into the split that like G2 was just going to win again. They upgraded their roster. I mean, before the season, I, I saw one of Thorn's tweets that was actually really accurate, where people were saying that the competitive integrity of Europe was being harmed by Ocelot because of the fact that he assembled such a dominant team. They didn't even end up winning the split. So, so what does that mean in the in the context of like European League of Legends, Thorne? Yeah, basically, like let's face it, it was mainly Fnatic fans who were saying it, like because they didn't get perks, and so like realistically, once you knew they were getting Nisky and they lost Reckless as well, like no one really could find a way in the off season to be hyped to the idea that like Fnatic can match G two, and so unfortunately, even though at the time. Rogue had made like interesting moves, etc. Actually, everyone pretty much just thought, well, if like even the good Fnatic teams couldn't be G2, this is like a super team they have now. So it's just game over and everyone was just crying like, oh, they've ruined the whole region, etc. Joke is they didn't even make the final. Never mind, didn't win. Like, dude, they didn't make the final. Like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. So yeah, to me, I think, it's, I think it's actually like a massively relevant moment, not least because then it wasn't even like it was Rogue, the team that like beat them in the lower bracket who then won or whatever, like with all established players like Odo Amni, etc. Like, Hans Sama, people who've been there a long time. It was actually the team that had their chances last year and most people kind of wrote them off because they didn't manage to do it in the playoffs. And then even more so, the two players they brought in, like Armut and Yel Yoya, like they're not famous players in LEC. So to me, the interesting thing here is, first of all, it shows that right now in League of Legends, it isn't about having the best player at every position. Because like, as you saw from that fan vote, it looks silly now, but like I get why fans voted all the G2 players, all the best players. Like on paper, you can't beat the names. Like the names just destroy your brain when you see it. You think, fuck, reckless. Hey, like, you, you, you know, you can't help but think they're the best. But League of Legends right now isn't about just having like the best name on paper. It's about who's the best right now in this meta. And so I think what you saw in the playoffs to me is like Mad Lions and Rogue, like justifiably were better teams. Like look how they actually played through the playoffs. The other teams were scrambling, you know. I even think, by the way, just as an aside, I'll throw this out there. I think if Schalke had even like maybe one slightly better player, they could have been in the mix. Like they were playing pretty well. They just didn't have the pieces, I don't think. So to me, all that complaint in the off season, it's why it, I don't know if people haven't followed sports very often, but you can't can't do that you can't look in the future and take dominance now and like extend it years in the future like the same thing happens in sports like no matter what sport you follow like Barcelona can be literally like the best football team ever but then two years later they might be like the seventh best football team and they might even have the same players like to me sports just don't work that way so yeah I think the context of this like split is massive because think about it right all those past years it was it was always G2 or Fnatic in the finals except that one time that Frog and Alliance won so the idea that not only did G2 not make the final but then it's like two sets of rookies battling for the title it actually just shows that like most of the complaints about Europe I think were mad overblown I always said it on all my shows Dom people took the G2 super team the one with perks and they made it like that was LEC like no that was like one team that will never exist ever again the other teams already were compatible like but it's where the Fnatic team that was making all those finals other teams could beat them and challenge them and have a chance to beat them so yeah I think people have finally realized like actually if anything LEC's back it was it was before when we had the super team. We had one team that was going to win every time. Now I can't wait for the summer split. There's like four teams could win. Yeah, the thing I want to ask Armut is when did you actually start thinking that you were that you could win the split or that it was realistic? Because you know, like, uh, was it was it during the split? I mean, you guys were pretty much like third, fourth the entire time. And then like, was it when you beat Rogue um, in in the upper bracket? Then you suddenly felt like, oh wait, we can actually do it. Or when did you think that you could mm. feasibly win the split? I mean. I never talked of it, like to be honest, like I never thought we could be we could be the winners of the split because after beating GT in the upper bracket, we talked that they're gonna be just gonna come from lower bracket and beat us in the finals. <laughs> that's we, realistic. Yeah, I mean, okay. That's what Jesus. that's what we expected. I mean that's what yeah. I expected to be honest. Yeah. Because everyone was saying, like no one was happy that we beat G two, you know, everyone was saying it's normal. G2 just gonna come from lower bracket and they're gonna beat you guys. It's just the same scenario every year, you know? <laughs> Everyone was like that, so I was just, yeah, I guess it's just like that, you know? I, I, don't, I don't mind. I mean, I mind, of course, but this is my this is our first split, so I don't mind losing in the finals to G2, so who cares? Yeah, and like, we just beat them all. I don't know, to be honest. I never expect us to win this split. Like, we were 
Yeah, it was weird actually. I always thought that we were the third best team in LEC in the regular season and even in the playoffs. But I think in playoffs in the stage, I think we were just playing much better than Rogue. So I would say we were the second team. But G2, their drafts and their game plan, gameplay, they were like a bit weird than how it used to be, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we won the split. Yeah. Why don't we talk yeah. about that a little bit, actually? Because I actually just had Mac, the coach of Mad Lions, on Summoning Insight. And obviously, we were mm -hmm. talking about some of these issues. That's one thing he kind of hinted at, is that he himself was a bit surprised at how they actually played in G2. Because, for example, it was actually during the segment where I was like having a rant about Reckless, right? Because to me, what doesn't make sense about the way G2 ended up when the playoffs arrived is Reckless was, by the time they got to playoffs, like the best player. It's the reason he won the MVP. And in some ways, they were almost like playing through him. And now Wonder's just a fucking tank player. Like, the reason why that's so bizarre to me is i was hyped about this g2 lineup because i was like actually this is the perfect team for reckless he just gets to be like the ch the guy who chills while his solo laners are monsters and then if it gets to the point where he has to be in a team fight it's reckless he'll have farmed up and he'll just carry the team fight instead they didn't really play that way and in fact even the way they drafted the reason i thought this was interesting i want to ask you guys about this actually is the way that they drafted to me this is why you can't think of this g2 like the one with perks the one with perks was like a draft nightmare they could flex everything they could do a million picks everywhere if they did something in draft that was weird they probably had a good plan for it this looked like just a normal team where I'm going to guess in scrims something must have gone wrong or something was going bad in the last few weeks because they drafted like they knew they had a bunch of weaknesses and were trying to like stay away from them like I don't know what's going on what do you think Armour what did you think in this sense were you expecting a different G2 come for the playoffs yeah I mean I think their draft against Rock, for example it was like really questionable and against us they like forced the karma pick on ADC was like it was too much I think it didn't pay off. I think, like, after we went surfing, they tried to replace with Karma, but it didn't work out. I mean, it was with, it's really strong with surfing what they were doing, but we just didn't want to see surfing and we banned it. But they were just trying to pick Karma on ADC and it just didn't work out for them. And, like, against Rook series, like, I just didn't understand the draft at all. Like, I was like, why are they doing this, you know? It has zero meaning, to be honest to me. Yeah. Like you weird. get the premise of what I mean, Dom. Like, put it this way. What I essentially am saying is, without knowing anything about what's going on behind the scenes in the scrims, if I had their players and I'm the coach of G2, there's no way I'm, like, playing and coaching that way. Like, I would, like again, I might be wrong. Maybe they know something I don't. But, like, that's that's why I have to speculate yeah. something's gone wrong. I don't even think they played to their strengths, dude. I mean, I think the, the thing wasn't so much, like, the draft, but just, like, the way that they played the games out. It felt like it didn't have the confidence that G2 normally has. Like, I, I feel like League of Legends this is something that I talked about on Facecheck a little bit. Um, but I feel like League of Legends, like the thing that I really enjoy about League of Legends is that you can see like players' personalities like within their movement and how they play. And like you can see like people that have like ego movement and and players that, that uh, play certain ways. And you can kind of like get a little bit of them as people through their gameplay. Um, and it felt like G2 was just like nervous or like they, they were like scared or something where you almost never see that from them. They always felt like even when they were hard losing a game that they were just going to make like good decisions and they would go into like fights that were losing like with decent amount out of confidence played the best they could and if they lost even just like the atmosphere seemed way more like relaxed and like okay whatever we lost go next game like we'll probably end up winning that game when you saw the players like get up from the desk when you saw the players in game it had like this sense of like um like nervousness or anxiety that we haven't seen before and and it was after mad lions actually beat them that i tweeted out that like that was the only time that i've seen g2 lose in yes. europe in in a series and convincingly it right yeah, yeah and it actually felt like like, they were the worst team. Like, it always felt yes. like if G2 lost before, it was like, oh, well, they just had, like, a bad day, or they, like, trolled a little bit, or they threw pretty hard. Mm. There was always an excuse for it. But when Mad Lions beat them, I was like, damn, <laughs> Mad, like, actually just outplayed them in the course of a I best think, of five series. I thought it was crazy. I, I think because, like, in Paleos, like, when I was playing against G2, I felt like they had only one win condition kind of every game, which was Caps. I mean, he was playing Tristana, Lucian. He was taking all the resource. He was the only carried only champion like it was the only champion and the player in the team that he was potential of to carry the team so like it was kind of easy to play against them just cc the like caps you know and win the game like just focus on in, in team fight it was kind of easy Here's the theory, Dom. You know, I always say about perks, like a mad intangible that a fan won't understand is that if you are a player, obviously example would be like a younger player, like Blabber or Fudge or something. If you're playing a series and it, you, it, you're down 2-1 and it's game four, you look down the line, you see perks, you go, well, we got it won. No problem at all. This guy's going to win. Mm -hmm. Mate, you in G2, they look, they look down smart. the line. It's fucking reckless. He's already putting in the eye drops for game five. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> 
He's got Jesus. a little hanky, you know, for <laughs> getting it out. Is this going dry? Because <laughs> oh, by I... the way, I'll, I'll, I'll actually do the historian thing just briefly for people to corroborate what you're mm-hmm. saying there. Think of the times that G2 lost in the last two years where we had the double a limb, right? So first time round, it was Mad Lions, but it was that ridiculous like five game series and game four was that one where they had a mental throw where they basically mm-hmm. almost won by that much and threw the series. Then they came back with mega dominant in the final. Then you had the summer. So in the summer, they obviously lost to Fnatic in the upper bracket, but that was where again, they had a throw right at the fucking inhibitors and they had some like really weird like draft decisions in that one. So that one kind of like people felt like it didn't count. They came back from the lower bracket. They dominated the final again. So I think most people were trying to do that storyline now, but I agree with you, mate. Like both this series, they lost in this particular split, like to Rogue and to Mad. Those guys like convincingly outplayed you two. That wasn't, yeah. there's not even any, I don't even think there were many that debatable games in it. Like they were just getting straight up beaten and most of, most essentially, this is how you know they're not the old G2. Dude, the comeback potential was non-existent in some of those games. Yep. You didn't get scared like, oh fuck, if they don't close it out soon, they're going to come back. No, they just like every, now they're human again. If they're behind in a game and they're down 3K yeah, goals, they they'd lose. probably just lose the game. Yeah, they're just humans again. Yeah, I, I remember um, like just in, in spring playoffs last year, the last time Mad Lions beat them, if you look at those games, right, like, you you got a different vibe from it. It was like, oh, well, Caps is playing Ziggs, and it's like, oh, if he just hit the Nexus here, they probably, like, win yes. the game. Like, they, they were, like, constantly backdooring. Even though Mad had this, like, massive lead within the game, and, like, the Olaf had, like, 15 kills or something on Shadow, it still was like, damn, G2's, like, constantly splitting bot. Oh, shit, they're, like, base racing. They're doing all these, like, different types of things within the game. And that was already Dragon Soul meta, so you can't even say that it was like, oh, well, the meta yes, was true. more towards, like, sp- split pushing or anything like that. It just felt like they were so mo- much more willing to, like, tunnel in on what are the only ways we can win this game okay let's commit to that and do it now it feels like like if they get outplayed it's like it's it's unlucky and i think the the other thing that i wanted to talk about was um was how yankos looked in general i feel like yankos looked way weaker um than elioya and inspired um throughout uh the playoffs and it, it was different because normally the yankos you'd see would be willing to like sacrifice himself to um you know help out lanes like he would always be uh, in like losing time and losing experience in order to put his lanes in really good position to carry, but it felt like he was kind of lost in this series. I don't know if uh, if you had any feelings like that um, in the game, but it seemed like El Yoya and Inspired comprehensively out jungled him. Do you have any feelings? Was that like, Armut, by the way? Yeah, yeah. For Armut, yeah, do, yeah. Do you yeah. do you feel uh, different like playing against Yankos in um I mean, in playoffs? I mean, I also watched against G two versus Rogues, and both junglers seems to be beating Yankos that series. I mean. Elioya beat them and then Inspired to beat them. So, I mean, they were both focusing on the jungle camps while Jankos was trying to gank mid or something. I remember that he's just chilling in the mid bush for like one minute every game, kinda. Mm-hmm. It felt weird, you know? I mean, yeah. I don't know what was the problem. Maybe he's just, he cannot gank any lane. Maybe, I don't know. Because we know that Jankos likes to gank and sacrifice his camps according to like not sufficient clear to get like have gank like possibilities from top and bottom or mid lane but like it just didn't work out for them this year i guess i mean playoffs at least yeah dude i also felt like another thing that was really weird for a g2 team was like there were games like where armut was talking about before where like caps wasn't just like a threat with a champion pick there were games where he had loads of kills and he was fed and you were like right let's see how he's gonna win this game it's like they just lose the game with him fed like the team doesn't look like they were coherent at all like i know everyone wants to believe that every playoff is like the team that works the best together wins it's not true in plenty of esports games in the league of legends there's times where just having the better players it's almost impossible to lose like if you had some of the tsm lineups three or four years ago where they're double if Bjergsen, you weren't going to lose a series, even if that team on paper was playing correctly, more correctly than you. Right now, like, as I said, mate, I look at the teams like Schalke, and I was like, I think even Schalke was playing better in terms of as a team in the playoffs than G2 was. G2 looked like they were less than some of their parts. This was a really bad playoff performance. I know everyone thought, like we were alluded, because it's low brackets, some of them, they'll come back. Like, whatever problems they had just exist. Like, there's no solution for them right now. Yeah, and they were both pretty like dominant series, right? It was it was three ones both times that they lost. Yes. Uh, lost three one to Mad, lost three one to Rogue. So I mean, I definitely think there was a storyline there. Oh, the team we haven't touched on that much is, is Fnatic, which is the other team that was expected to Let's be in in the lower bracket. Um, I kind of gave Fnatic a pass because you know like, I I I had heard that they had um, like uh, Hilly had Corona and they all had to play from like their their rooms that weren't able to play in the same um, office space during the Damn last it. week. Of all the times when people would all be locked in their room, not with their team, it's reckless. This should have been your split. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be training for this from years ago since season seven like uh, your teammates would even be used to not being able to look you in the eye 
contractually, you know, while playing with me. <laughs> this is the one season it would have made sense. Exactly. Damn. So, so for Fnatic, I mean, uh, like, I guess that they they just been underperforming for a while. Even versus SK, like the fact that they dropped a the game versus SK, I was already yes. kind of like skeptical. I was like, uh, this team, like SK, didn't look like they were in the same like realm as the rest no of the way. teams. So yes. the fact they're already um, dropping a game looked strange, but it felt like they had a massive drop off. Like, did you feel that um, yourself, Armu? Like, did you have experience like scribbing them or just like how they're playing? Like, how did you feel about uh, <clears throat> Fnatic throughout I the mean, season? Uh, it feels like I felt like they had some problems, but I didn't know any of it because it was just so fiesta that every game that we played kind of. So I just, I mean, it was obvious that they had problems, but I just didn't know who or like what was it, you know, because there was like many. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, when you, you never... scrim against Fnatic, by the way, is it okay. just you and Whipple like fucking running it down versus each of the twenty-four set? Are you just do you actually play properly when you play him in scrims? Because I've like I've seen you guys in LEC in scrims. Do you actually play conservative the way you should in one v ones? I mean, uh, I mean, usually people just don't go run it down anymore because I think scrims has like more value due to Corona because like ah, okay. playing from home like has like more meaning to everyone. I mean, scrims has just more value. Sure. And so, I mean, I don't, I don't want to do the run it down, and I don't want to test so much things because it's also affect the other nine people that trying to play and learn. You know, it's sure. kind of disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Do you, you think hear that, Huni? I mean, do you think that has any impact on your champ pool? I mean, that was one of the things that that people have been criticizing about Mad Lions is that you guys haven't shown like that much depth compared to like other teams. Specifically, like for for you top lane, it seems like you've been playing a ton of of uh, Nar and Wukong. Um, and yeah. it's, it seems like like you're even picking it into matchups that people perceive as not favorable. Like you played Wukong into Karma, um, which yeah. most people think would be like an unplayable lane, right? So, yeah, it was really, it was really, it's, it should be really hard. Like it should be unplayable even. It's really. Was this the game? Because when since I said we just had your coach on summoning yep. insight, I think this is the game um, where he said <laughs> that you actually said to one of your teammates, like one of them said to you, I think it was Kaiser or something, was like, "What do you think this lane's like?" And you were like, "Doomed." Even though you just picked like Wukong into whatever camera on there. <laughs> yeah, so, Wukong... Is that the one you were talking about, Game 3? Yeah, yeah Game 3. Is... I mean, my top lane matchup is totally doomed, but they, I saw like Lucian, Caitlyn, or something like this, so I just, I had to pick Wukong. Like, and we always, we it all already had like, yeah, it worked. We already had like 2 0 with 0 2 with Nar, so mm -hmm. I didn't want to play Nar and just get 3 0. Like, I wanted to some try new things, you know? Yeah. And like, Wukong worked, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just, it, it's kind of funny because when you look at like the champions that you were playing a lot in, like with the addition of Nar, uh, you're, you're playing a lot of like the same champions that you were playing when you took a Romay's job in, at, at Worlds, you know? You, you, <laughs> yeah. you, like you play Wukong, you play Malphite. Do you just have preference for these champions or do you just think that like these he champions also are really strong just, in the meta? He also really likes humiliating Romanian players whose name starts with O. <laughs> that's, that's one of the, put that a fact piece of trivia on his Wikipedia or something. I mean, to be honest, I was like not practicing Wukong or Malphite for like even more than three months. I just played one Wukong game in Scream, I remember. It was into Urgot. But like, the thing is, I'm not just playing these champions, but like in stage, when I see the opportunity, they're just golden picks for me, I guess. Because like, Wukong is kind of free, even if they're like two unmobile AD carries, it's just pick me, Wukong. I don't care about the matchup. Even Malphite, Renekton, I don't mind, you know? Yeah, I mean, even even Renekton, I mean, that, that that's that's different because most of the people, the players that that um, you know are in these situations, they don't want to look bad, right? They don't want to end up playing a Wukong into Renekton lane, be down thirty CS. So where does like yeah. the the confidence come from that you don't like that you kind of like block out all the criticism and you just play for like your team there? Because I feel like that's really unique for a top laner. I mean. I don't care what people say about me. No? I mean, I remember that you were flaming me. Yep. You were flaming me yep, in the week one or this. week two. Yeah. What did he say? Do you remember? It? Did, did he say yeah. any specific thing you can remember? He, he that was like, me. come on. Oh, he was like, oh my God, man. I'm so disappointed on Armut. I, like, I had like so much high expectations mm -hmm. from him after the Veros, but like, what's he doing? You know, it was something like, how is he losing this matchup or something like that? Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Then so after that, I, what was I your opinion? you. I'm sorry. What was your interpretation of that criticism? Like, like, do you think you were underperforming in those weeks, like in laning phase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was, I wouldn't say underperforming. I would just say like, they were just better players in the laning phase than me. I mean, for example, Broken Blade, Odo Amne, Wunder, that these guys, I think, have better laning phase than me. So I was just like, yeah, but like, I just muted you after you flamed me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, well, didn't, well, I didn't want to okay. see me getting flamed in my like 
know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, that's, uh, that, that's fair enough. I mean, it doesn't seem like you, like you took it uh, to heart that much. What do you think was, was, was different about like the way they're laning and, or, and also, do you think that there's still better laners than you? Or do, do you think that you like improved a lot throughout the split and now you're laning better? Hmm. I think it's much easier right now to f me to face against them in the laning. I mean, I feel much easy, but I still think that I have a long way to go in, for example, in the laning. But I'm really close to them, but I think I still think they are a little bit better than me, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. That, that's a, yeah. that's an extremely like honest answer. I mean, I think that it's good to have that level of like self reflection to be able to be like, oh, like, you know, even though I won, I'm not better than these players comprehensively. There's still other things I need to work on. I actually remember the matchup. It was the was it the Jace GP matchup? Jace versus Jace versus Nar. Oh, and Jace saying, versus Nar. How is Jace losing to Nar when he even split the map? You know, I remember this. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. It was map split. It was it was map split. Yeah, yeah. Jace but the versus thing Nar. Is, what in that what, map what? Split, Yeah, in that map split, I leashed. The thing is, if, when I leashed, Brokumle started the pushing lane with Nar, and this kind of like range matchup. Both we are both range, and Jace level one is really, really weak right now. I mean, after the nerfs, Jace level one is like really bad. It mm -hmm. used to be really strong that enemy top lane couldn't even get any XP, you know. But like right now, he's really weak champion. So he started pushing. He got the level two advantage. He even poked me when I came lane, so it was kind of doomed. To be honest, okay. Nar Jace matchup. I think. If Jace has push level one, I mean Jace can push level one if he wants. Then with that push, he can win after the first place. But when Nar get Tabi, it's kind of doomed for Jace the laning. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why Nar is the best planting pro probably. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think that my perception of Jace also changed throughout the the split because I mean, normally you had Jace in your mind. It's like the super dominant laning champion. Yeah, I, yeah, it used to be like that. Yeah, it used to be like that, but now I feel like it's more of like a scaling champion because you have Eclipse and then you, now you have like uh, Muramana and the Eclipse changes make it so that like Jace's big weakness used to be sustain, right? Like you just had no sustain in your kit, so like champions like Malphite would be a lot harder for uh, for you throughout the game. But now it seems like Jace can actually sustain with like, uh, like cause he can buy an early vamp scepter and things like that and just like build into it. So may maybe my perception of the matchup was also not uh, not the best people are memeing Flandre Jace because of the EDG series, but yeah. Uh, w when we when we started, um, w when we started like hearing your name a lot, it was definitely during play-ins of, of Worlds last year. How did you go about like coming into that play-in and like, were you already like thinking that you were going to join LEC regardless or like what was your mentality towards like that tournament because that's really when you broke out uh like on the scene yeah. for like most people internationally yeah I mean to be honest that year we almost didn't even go to playoffs with my team so it was really hard tough Damn. year you know <laughs> yeah and I mean we beat the finals which I was still not expecting in 2020 then we went to worlds I was just Okay, like let's show the world what we got, you know. But I, I had like zero expectations of like beating everyone and going to like going to bad major regions, transfer to major regions. So, I mean, after the beating the Mad Lions, I was still like, hmm, what if I don't get any offer from major teams? But like all my team were like saying, dude, you are going for sure. Like then I, yeah, then I tweeted about it, and after two days, that there were like many teams that were interested about me. So I'm really happy. Yeah. It, it was actually quick because, like, we started hearing rumors of you joining Mad Lions very shortly after Worlds. So how fast did this whole thing end up happening where you ended up, like, becoming the starter for the team? I mean, when we are, like, beating them 2-1 or 2-0, I remember that in we were in stage, I remember that they were laughing. So it's really, like, wow. Like, they are they have, like, really strong mentals and, like, they must have, like, really good inside, outside of the game, you know? Contact yeah, good between the players. Yeah, good relationship. So it's it's it seems nice, you know. It seems to be that I want to be joined. I mean, I could be also joining of this part of Steam, you know. And so they just wrote to me, and I was like, they are the top three team in the EU's. I mean, I was going to EU or NA for sure, but it was from Medline, so I just couldn't decline it. By the way, obviously another like weird piece of trivia from that exact tournament is that your jungler was a very, very legendary jungler in League of Legends. Yeah. Kakao, the old school yeah. player who won like OGN champions in like season four summer, who used to be considered at that time one of the absolute best junglers. But if people don't know, after that, he had like a period where he went to China. He was actually playing with Lucky in uh, fucking IG. Then after that, there was that weird period when he was like a challenger player in Europe, etc. So he's been all over the place since then. What was it like in 2020 to play with Kakao? 
down? Like, like did were you actually someone who followed Korean League of Legends back in the day? Did you know who he was before you played with him? Uh, sorry, can you say the last sentence again? Actually, did you did you actually know him from his past in Korea? Did you used to follow League of Legends back then when yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah? I mean, I, I mean, who doesn't know Kako man? Like Kako <laughs> is like living legend, you know. But like when he came to us, he was not good. He used to be. I mean, that's of course to be yeah, honest. Sure. You know. But like he was still really good that you can see from his mechanics. He was not even playing solo queue, and but like he was still beast. Like he was just stomping everyone in the jungle. I think the problem he had just I think he just played too much League of Legends over like nine years, so that's really understandable right. that he's kinda out of energy, you know. I think he also quit League of Legends after that year. Damn, fair enough. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Makes sense, though, because if you think about it, when you know, like, the rep of some of the Koreans, how much they practice on top of, like, mm -hmm. scrims and stuff, I, I, after a couple of years, you'd expect to be burned out. If you played for, like, seven, yeah. eight, nine years, yeah, you're going to be... You played nine like, years. You played a lifetime of League of Legends at that point in time. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I wish definitely... we had that stat. I don't know if you know this, Dom, because I don't. There's nothing like it in League. In CS:GO, because in Steam itself, it keeps like a track of how many hours you've played every two weeks, roughly. We yep. actually have a thing in CS:GO where people sort of like keep track of how often the pro players' account is playing, so you can see who's like spamming it a lot. It's a shame in League. I guess you can look up the games, but like no one ever really so many, knows. So how everyone much has so play. many different. Like, yeah, everyone has Smurf and... accounts and shit. Yeah, I wish I wish there was a way to know like who was really like the guy who just practices twenty four seven. Yeah, I mean, it's strange because, like, you see uh, players that always kind of grind games. I'm not sure if, if Odo Wabne is still like that. I know last year he was he was playing a lot, but it seems like he's one of the people that has been playing for, like, seven, eight years, and he still, like, plays actually, a lot. I respect. Actually, sorry to interrupt you, but I think Odo Wabne, he tried out this year so hard that he improved so much, actually, because last year I was playing him against in solo queue, and, like, he didn't felt, like, I didn't felt much pressure against him last year, but this year, in regular season, he was the by far best laning top lane. He improved so much this year. I think he was just going all in, to be honest. Yeah. Do you think he had some problems in the finals? Yeah. I think in playoffs, Brock had problems with stage. That's what I felt. I mean, I don't know who had the problems, but as a team, as a players, they all seem to be have, like, some heavy, having some problems, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the, the question for Odo Abne would be, like, do, like, do you think that... that you know, the pressure of, like, the reverse sweep and, like, the the fact that, like, you know, it was his first title, his first finals after, like, so long. Do you think that that kind of, like, played on his mental throughout the series? Like, did you feel like he was laning more passively um, than he was before in the season? I mean, um, he could have done so much more better laning, to be honest. If you compare to the regular season, to the playoffs, yeah, I think he was such a beast, like, in the regular season. And I didn't felt much in the playoffs. But when I figured out that he they pick Renekton in the game five instead of Nar, I was like, why? Maybe it has something to do with it, you know? I don't know. I don't know. It's just my thinking. Yeah, I mean that that was definitely super weird because like when Nar is up, Nar is like one of the most classic counters to Renekton. And like Odamne has the like he's probably the best Nar in the league, like yeah, he's leaning super good. wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean before the series, like we played two times in Rogue and the first. First series, we banned five game of Nar because we were like, if he gets Nar, he will just get, he will just play, he will just win the one we ban, and he will he can even one me too, you know, because Nar allows him to do that, and he was really good Nar, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, strange. It feels like like by the end, Rogue was just playing like not to lose instead of playing to win, almost like with their with their draft. I felt in games like they were they were actually like still making things happen early game, but it just felt like like the pressure of everything was was weighing on them. Um, it's like you say, though, that's why I think the, the bigger picture, like particularly for someone like Odo Amne, to a lesser degree, Hans Sama, when you're people who've been in the league for ages and you just never, like, I know Hans Sama technically was in a final, but like, you never were going to win the final. Like, when, when you actually think about the logic, right? Because they played G2 the day before this final, that means your whole world, all you're looking at is G2 at that moment. You can't think who's in the final because it's fucking G2. For all you know, they're going to win the splits. All your focus is on, we've got to beat G2 in a best of five, which very few teams ever do. So when you finally beat, them now listen you don't go into the final think you're automatically going to win but you think oh i've got a really good chance to win out two of us with two underdog teams in the final i've all these years i finally been like it feels like i've noticed right as a trend in sports anytime people are like oh well done man it's your time to win because someone like sort of deserved to win for years before and now yeah. it looks like they've got the easy path that's when you always slip up because you don't want to be thinking that good to no match what you really want to think in any final is best case scenario you want it to be like right we're 50 50 and i've got to play really well and if i play really well i win the match you never want to feel like what you're saying 
dom. Like, look, if we just play and we just don't make a few mistakes, we probably win. Like, that's that's a terrible mentality to have in a game. And so, to me, I felt like the second they went 2-0 up, two, two because you saw that game three, that was mad winnable. Like, they just looked like, right... I guess we won the series, so we just keep playing and it'll just happen. It's like, no, you, you, you've you got to treat each game like it's a wall. Like, it's, until it's done, it ain't done. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah. super it's super tough. I mean, I, I wanted to ask ask Armut about, like, the team mentality because I feel like most teams would have cracked after game two. I already said, yeah. like, one, once it was, like, I think it was maybe, like, 12 minutes into game two, I was already saying, like, I don't know how Mad could come back from this because when I see a team start, like, breaking down and it felt like in that game two, you guys had a bunch of unforced errors, right? Like, people were just getting outplayed in situations where they normally wouldn't. And I felt like normally a team that, that has all those misplays, like, they just start thinking, like, oh, we're shit. Like, oh, okay, well, I guess we just fucking lose. And then the fact that you guys battled back, you somehow, like, like escape that hole that you were in in game two battled back were in position to win and then like that you guys kind of like threw the game at the dragon fight you guys should have won that game how did you guys like approach game three without like tilting off the face of the planet okay so whole series like the game one i think they just played much better than us so yep. it was like acceptable lose from us you know but like game two they kind of stole the game from us and it made me angry probably my team as well because at game two we saw that we are actually just better that we can beat them, that we should not give them the trophy that's free, you know? I mean, I don't want to give like give the people the 3-0 finals anyway, because I want people to have enjoy anyway. So okay. after 3-0, we just talked that we can just beat, and like even we lose, I we didn't want to lose that easily, you know? Like, not 3-0 at least. And then I showed the camera, 3-2, you know? <laughs> 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 yep. Because like I was actually believing that we can actually win, so... And we did it, like, yeah, that yeah. I'm really happy. I mean, so, but what, what, what do you guys, like, is there, is there a voice of, like, reason, or, like, how do you guys keep, like, the mental strong in those types of games? Like, is it just, like, all the players are just kind of untiltable, or, like, is there something that, that you guys, like, talk about to, or is there, like, somebody within the team that's like, hey, like, keep on focusing, this game's still winnable? I mean, I don't think people are saying, let's focus on the game, because it's kind of pointless to say, because yeah. everyone should know it's the finals, like, you sure. have to focus, like, like, 2-0 doesn't mean anything, because... Every game is just another one piece, you know? You just need to get three pieces of one, but like the one, like the two they get, it doesn't mean anything if they don't get the third one. So yes, mm -hmm. it doesn't change anything. Yeah, yeah, that's one area where I understand totally, by the way, why the players who are in the game, it's easy to think that way. Like, oh, fuck, we're down 0-2, and if they win this game, it's lost. But yeah, obviously the mentality always should only just be whatever game you're playing now. It's like the same in, in other games like Counter-Strike, for example. Until their score says 16, it's not over. So why would you ever be worried about what the fucking scoreboard says? Like, the scoreboard yeah. takes care of itself. You just win each game separately, don't you? Yeah. And eventually, if it happens, it happens. Of course, but I mean, when you see other teams like in those positions, you see them crumble like quite a bit. And I feel like, course, you know, yeah. the pressure of the fact that it is a final, like you guys are like a relatively young team. Like, I mean, the, the most senior player you have is, is a three year veteran or like this is third year within LEC, right? So uh, the fact that like all that stuff is, is happening, it's it's really hard to like just mentally ignore. But I guess that just is a testament to like Mad Lions as a team and like how you guys uh, approach. Um, I've got games. a question for him along those lines there. Sure. Right, Armut, being as in the final, the first two games went fairly badly, and you were in yeah. a bad spot, right? Did you actually, do you, what, what do you think would have happened if G2 had played you? G2 would play with us? Yeah, what if G2 had won instead of Rogue? I mean, to be honest, I wanted to play against G2 in the finals because even if we lose then, people would just say, ah, it's G2, it's normal, met to met lines to lose. <laughs> okay. It will be less pressure, yeah. and if we win, it will be like, Oh my More god, epic, they beat yeah. you in the finals, you know? Yeah. It would yep. be, like, so much better for us. So I was really sad that Rogue beat you too, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, against you too, I don't know what would happen, but after seeing them against Rogue, I think we would have beat them 3-1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I actually agree with that. I, I just don't see a world where they that G2 like playing on that level would be able to match up like in the early game also um it just felt like uh, the, the one thing I wanted to ask you is you've been talking about Odawamne as like the best laner I mean for years like Wonder was considered like the unbeatable laner you know it was really like you'd talk about mm -hmm. who's the second best uh top laner in in LEC is it Odawamne or Bwipo that was more interesting remember discussion. going into MSI for season nine Papa Smithy called Wonder the best western player mm-hmm 
Yep. Not even just top lane, a player, just best Western player. That was the hype this guy had for sure. Yeah, he was he was crazy good. It feels like G two just like I mean I don't I don't know what happened with with their like communication, but it feels like Wonder just died and would get ganked constantly like the entire series. Like it, it never felt like there was any like communication. Um, like, it always felt like in previous um iterations of G two, whenever you would go and kill Wonder, you'd lose something so yes. like you, you lose it's such a on big prize right? yeah. on see. the other side of the yeah. map that it would be like catastrophic but here it just felt like he was dying for free like did you feel like like wonder was uh you know falling off towards the split because he was one of the people that like um i think like abused you in like your first game right like he, he was looking mm -hmm. really good at the beginning of the split actually the playoffs time that he improved like so much to wonder to be honest because in the regular season in sick creams and in the games I was not, not not feeling that much pressure against him, but like in playoffs times, he was like stepping up to be honest. He was just getting much, much, much better. And then in playoffs, he was the probably best top lane. But like in stage, I think I wouldn't say it's about Wonder. I think it was just G2 as a five. I think they just made misplays. Mm -hmm. well, because I'm pretty sure Wunder was like probably the best in playoff series for sure. I mean, it was against us. They just didn't ban that and they just picked like some weird champions in Tinar, so I just I cannot understand like how good he is, you know? Mm -hmm. Because it was I had some extra advantage in my pocket, kinda. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean most people wouldn't even consider like that to be like that much of an advantage. I mean, Wonder's like the type of player that, you know, it feels like no matter what he would playing he what he was playing in playoffs, he would always perform. Um, but it just didn't feel like it was all there. So yeah, I mean I I just wonder if like if G2 is going to come back in summer and be like a real contender for the title, or if this is going to like kind of like hamper their, uh, you know, championship mentality, so to speak. Do you have any, I uh, think they go for yeah. it, go for it. I'm, I think they will come back because what they needed is kind of like vacation, maybe to get rid of the burnout, you know, and in G2 summer they will the just vacation. Like... Okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, because they're just winning everything, right? They're winning MSI, they're winning Worlds, and they're, like, competing in higher level, like, for so long, they don't have time to relax and, like, sure. staying out of League of Legends. Mm -hmm. So maybe that was the case. I'm I'm not... I don't know, but it's just my thinking, you know? No, it's the same so, thing, actually, yeah. that even though he got flamed, famously, Soaz said when they did that first... The, the All-Stars, that was, like, a fake MSI, even though one, like, the year before MSI, 2014. That was the one where, famously, Fnatic just said they didn't bother practicing for it, and all the fans flamed them, like, how unprofessional. But if you actually went back and looked, Soaz had played it, like, fucking, like... Season, it played like season three spring into like the all stars that was a real all stars into like a summer split into worlds into like off season tournaments. We used to have that, like the Battle of the Atlantic and IEM Cologne. Then he'd gone into the spring split and then he'd gone to this all stars. So it's like I even remember thinking back then, like, yeah, the dude doesn't have any fucking time off in like a year or something. So, like, in a mad way, like, I actually do think if you're the champion team who never loses, eventually you'll just get burned out from that alone. That alone's going to take its toll. You have to have some time off. Yeah, I feel like like that's that's true, but definitely like fr from my perspective, uh, when they had like reckless enter the team, you feel like that would be kind of like a like a burst of energy. It's like oh, perks is you gone. Know so. Yeah, like perks is gone. Now we have to like prove ourselves again. Like you know, we want to we want to show that at least the team wasn't winning just because of perks. It was winning because you know like we're a good team, like all of us together. And it just felt like you know like it, it didn't feel like there was a lack of effort from G two. It didn't look like they were being lazy. It just looked like they were worse than, than other teams. So it was I really do surprising. think, oh mate, one thing is right. You know when Reckless first joined the team, they tried to hype it, and even I was told privately. Because by the way, if people don't know, in the off season, G two signed two players who are totally off brand for G two. They signed Nico in CS:GO and they signed Reckless in League of Legends. And these are two individually two of the best players in those games. But they're also two players who were known for like being like let's say like a little bit uptight or they're just not the people who banter you know that's not really their flavor like their style's more like i'm serious and i'm just good in the game if you like me you like me right so i even said to carlos privately like mate either you're gonna have to like go a different route with how you market these guys or you're gonna have to do pull some miracle out if you want to like turn these into like people memeing like yank horse and caps and perks were etc and he was telling me and i think he's even said it publicly like oh no don't worry like i'll turn them around they'll be part of it mm -hmm. i have to say right anyone who's following either game it hasn't happened 
Like, the closest they've come is they maybe got, like, reckless to do, like, one or two jokes in the off-season. But, like, he wasn't even in most of those, like, cap three, cap without cap. Like, he wasn't even doing half the shit. Like, I don't actually feel like the culture fit was actually that great. I feel like that was something in the off-season. Like, there's a reason why people wondered, like, on paper it looks great, but will it work in the team? Because the whole team before were all memers like that. They, I always thought the best thing about that is, not only does it work if you're a champion, that like, you seem like you have swagger, but more importantly, it offsets if you have a bad game. Because if they ever had a bad game or a draft, you never knew if it was a bad game or draft, right? You didn't thought like, because they would always meme anywhere that Krabs fucked the draft up and that Jankos, you know, ruined the game. So it was like a clever way to sort of protect yourself when you are having a slump and make people not sure. Like, are they slumping or are they just memeing on us and fucking around and will they beat us next? And so I didn't see any of that from this year, this split personally. And I don't think Reckless ever got integrated in that way. He was just a good player in the team. So like, I actually, I have to say some of the like, charm of the G2 team is a little bit gone. Now, to me, they are just like an all-star team. That's all they are. And I don't know if it'll ever come together and work. I don't, I don't see a lot of coherence with this team. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of, uh, it, it was a lot of transparency with what was happening within G2 when you saw their reaction to losing versus Mad, right? Like, they lost yes. versus Mad, and instantly, what do we see? Yangos gets on stream, he's like, by the way, I'm not going to stream for the next week because, like, we have, like, no leader within the team, and, like, I want to, like, try to step up and be a leader, and hopefully we can fix things. And, like, it, it, like that's a super uncharacteristic. Normally, G2 would be like, yeah, we lost to Mad Lions, like, we trolled a bit, you know? Maybe Karma isn't the best AD carry, whatever, and then they would just go into the next, like, uh, series and just stomp people, right? And then the other thing was Wonder. Wonder instantly, he's like, I'm uninstalling WoW, and then you just see a solo queue account. He's playing like 14 games a day where it's like, okay, this is this is something that we only saw from Wonder before, yes. like right before Worlds, right? So yes. you could tell that it's like, hmm, something is, is really off, but... Uh, you know, I thought that, that was going to be enough. Personally, I thought that, like, when I it saw those changes... It should have been enough. It's like I said, dude, they didn't need to be all G2. They just had to be the best five players, and they would have won, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. They just played like shit in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, it, it's... It. <laughs> it's just real. I'm sure they would admit it. It's the reason why, by the way, when I said that line in my video, when it was like Carlos had to decide was he going to take perks or caps, and obviously he was just taking caps in that scenario. I even said, I get why every fan would say I'd take caps, right? Because individually he's the better player. But my line was like, I wouldn't want to get rid of caps, but I would never get rid of perks under any circumstances ever. Until he's actually like bad at the game, that guy's intangibles are literally worth their weight in gold. Like this, there's a reason guy, this guy can't like, it's like he turns around and trips over and wins championships. That's how fucking insane this guy is at the game. So like, I don't care how good someone is. You saw it, this split boys. Caps was still a monster when he wanted to be, but didn't win you the game. Because the point is in League of Legends now, like one player doesn't win the game. He needs his team to work with him. So to me, whoever has the lead in the game has to be able to coordinate the rest of the team around them to use the lead. And in this team, they, they couldn't use these fucking leads for anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's super strange, but I mean, how much more legendary does does Perks look that, like, the best, like, the, the idea is in Europe, G2 is the best, like, talent level, like, team ever assembled now with Reckless being yep. added as an AD carry, and then Perks goes to NA, that team gets third, he wins, when most, like, uh, from my perspective, I thought TL should have been a better team when you look yes, at, like, agreed. their their roster, you know, like, they seem like they had the better pieces. I mean, like Fudge versus Alfari should be a, a huge, uh, a huge gap there. But yeah, I mean, you know, per Perks just ends up winning again. So I, I think By it's... By the way, I would totally agree with what you just said there. I actually think on paper, the adding Reckless actually made them in theory an even better lineup. Just yeah. on paper alone, like the names. Like, I know the old one was crazy, but that just shows how League isn't just about having the on paper best players, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for, for sure. But then what do the, you think, Alma? You seem like you, you're fucking, you've got some opinion on this. So come on, give us some thoughts, mate. <laughs> uh, I don't really watch NA. Okay. What do you think about this G2 angle? You must have seen the G2 when they had perks, etc. Like, what do you think the difference between the two teams? The one with Reckless um, and the one with perks is? To be honest, when, when they get Reckless and in regular season, uh, we talked that they were going MSI. I mean, this team is going MSI because with Reckless, they seem so strong in every lane that. They seem to be unbeatable, to be honest. Rectus was just like not going behind, no matter the case. He was just yes. staying there, carried the late game fight, and like they were doing the early game job, you know. So they seemed really strong. So after that, they struggle a lot in playoffs. So I don't know why, to be honest. Mm -hmm. That's kind of it. <laughs> That's what <laughs> I talked actually. What, yeah. What's your thoughts on, on Europe as a whole? Because like people are, I mean, the, the question that gets raised when a team like like Mad Lions wins is like. People don't know if it's like, did you guys get super insane? Is Mad Lions now just like that far ahead and Europe is still like a contender? Or is G2 like, did, did G2 get worse? And as a whole, did Europe get worse? Like that becomes the question. How do you feel um, about like, 
Europe as a whole? Like, do you think it's uh, because obviously this is your first season, so you never played uh, yeah. before in LEC, but just from watching it, like, do you think that that Europe as a whole is like a weaker region than it was in previous seasons? I wouldn't say it's weaker because like when I see LEC games are like really competitive and like really fun to watch. And like, I think it's also high level that we can see like in higher games, like top five, top five teams are pretty good in LEC. But I think G2 had like higher potential than any other team in EU, probably even more than us right now. So okay. I think maybe like according, like if you compare to the MSI and world stuff, Maybe G2 would have been much better if they, like, won or something. And, like, if they play according to their names, you know. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I don't think it's weaker right now. I think it's just... Yeah, it's just... It's just like this. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing know. is, though, okay. there's no, like there's no way to say this politely, Arbo, but, like, the one downside yeah. of your team, when it would have been the same, by the way, if Rogue had won, is that people won't have the same confidence for the LEC representative that they would if it had been G2, because, obviously, mm -hmm. especially the G2 with perks, like, they were straight up just beating the top Asian team sometimes, and they looked like, you know, they could win every yeah. tournament. Like, now, people, it's, it reminds me of just what we used to be like before we had the Super G2. Like, now, maybe you guys can do well. I think the one angle probably no one's brought up, by the way, I brought up on some of the insight is when it was the super team of G2 I never really thought that like Team Liquid or something was going to beat them in a the best of five I'm sure people would be very interested if you play Cloud9 in the best of five now that would be a pretty hype matchup yeah that it'd would be, be nice actually it'd, it'd be super hype you think you think EU would just beat NA just as always if you guys play that Cloud9 <laughs> I, I think so yeah I okay. mean I, I, I like Medlines is like we are pretty strong like <laughs> yeah I mean I'm trusting myself and my team. So, like, in MSI, like, we will do whatever we can. And I think we are pretty, like, high, 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 high top level. Yeah. Yeah. Like a high, like a high ceiling. It's yeah. A... Okay. Cool. When joining Mad Lions, is there, is there a player that, like, impressed you that was just way better than you thought yeah. before joining? It was, it was Humanite, probably. Like, this guy okay. is, is a beast. He's the best player in the team, in my opinion. He's, he, like, he knows everything about the game and his laning is really insane. I'm really impressed by him. He teach me a lot of things. More, uh, the players I've talked to who were like teammates of us, even players that actually never played on Mad Lions, because I've gone back and asked like some of the people who played with him in like the ERL era, they basically say that he's one of those players where like even when he was like a rookie, he just already knew what to do. He's not like a guy who, who came in, it's just like you only has the skills and none of the brains. Like a lot of his teammates think like very highly of like his game understanding basically, kind of like Armat's saying here. Yeah, I mean, I'm I, I respect him a lot. I felt like that finals was really like that was a huge mark. Just the way that he carried that game five. I mean, Armut also had like good like plays Bad throughout words. the game. <laughs> yeah, no, you. I mean, you you definitely played team fights well, but there's no chance that that Mad Lions would have a shot at winning the game if Humanoid didn't play like as oh, well. Yeah. As yeah, 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 like exactly. By the way, one of the criticisms I have of Reckless over his career, that in a lot of scenarios where it's like, when it's like a borderline moment where it's like, you probably, you could go in, but if you do, you could die, you could lose the game, but if you do, you might win the game. Reckless is the guy who always sort of like takes the extra pause of hesitation, mm -hmm. goes like, should I go in? I have to say, Larson's in that fucking mix as well. Yep. Mate, I don't know what it is with this guy. He's so skilled at the game when he has his champions and the game's going well. But man alive, there's so many times it just looks like he just fucking pussies out. I have to just say it. Just, he does, yeah. straight up. I, it was it was it was crazy. I mean, Humanoid really manhandled him over the course of the series. I think that was the biggest like surprise to me was how much better Humanoid was over the course of five games. Because I mean, when you talk about LEC mid laners, it's normally always like people say Caps is number one, and then people say Larson is number two, and then like yes. number three is like this season was like oh is it Humanoid or yeah, Nisky? It depends when it is. Like it yeah. just depends on, on on who's playing best at that mo moment. I mean, even Abadage can randomly. Um, for sure get yeah. get get thrown into that like number three mix i thought it was crazy how hard humanoid was like beating uh beating larson like in game one i'm sure you were surprised when you hit tab you look mid my victor is up 20 cs <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah he was he was Soriana. talking that mid is our guys <laughs> he was so at <laughs> he was double csing the oriana with victor it's it's like i don't know how to be honest yeah it was yeah. impressive i don't know i don't know how either i mean somehow he out traded him forced him back and then before he even based, he forced them out again, and he just kept a freeze. So like it was really, really insane seeing his performance. I felt like that was like the the you know the legendary performance. Was there a finals MVP? He must have gotten it if there was, right? I got what it. I guess. <laughs> Wait, you got finals MVP? Yeah, I got okay, it. Okay, okay. I can. I can <laughs> thank, I, thank, thank you. 
I can respect it. I can respect it. Did you did you think that humanoid should have won? I mean, I think Wukong pick third game and fourth game. I had huge impact, but I think humanoid sure. also plays really well in the all games probably. So I mean, it was me or him probably. Yeah. So I don't mind who gets it. You know. Yeah. By the way, Dom, did you like? Sadly, they're now deleted. But at the time, it was epic. That fucking perks clap back against Kazi on Twitter. Did yeah. You see yeah. It? yeah. Yeah, I like that it. was fucking fire. But then, but then he fire. deleted it, right? Because yeah, I sadly, if you delete it, it you, you, it's like a yeah. draw at that point in time that doesn't count anymore, perks. Come <laughs> on, man. That was fire! Because like, there's no <laughs> comeback to that, is there? Like, he actually fucking nailed him on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love that type of banter. I was, I, I even had a tweet. I was going to quote tweet it and be like, damn, even EU is ahead in banter, you know? Because it, it just, it felt like it was, like, it was, like, harsh, but it didn't seem like personal where it comes it wasn't off over the like line a, it was reasonable yeah. yeah exactly yeah it was reasonable i mean i i just think that that in general it was uh it, it's good banter to have you can tell that those two are, are just For friends sure. you know yeah so uh i mean since since we've been talking about your team i would like to to hear your um interpretation of el yoya's play because he's somebody who you know we we need to talk yeah. about here he's a rookie i actually thought that he he alongside you were were imp improved a ton throughout the split like you like your guys level top side from like week one to finals was was insane so what's your interpretation of playing with a jungle like this it seems like he has like a level of like confidence that rookies don't normally have as junglers like it seems like yeah, he's yeah, just yeah. really confident in his like mentality about the game it was like really surprisingly because like i would say like even if he played regular splits really well i would say okay but he gonna choke in stage most likely that's what i'm i was afraid of but like mm -hmm. he was after one game he said Oh my god, I was so scared to play. Then second game, he was just like going all in all the time, you know. So I was like really impressed by him. Like, just good job, you know. Because as a rookie, to play in stage just going all in all the time, he, and like not being afraid, it's just it's really good to see in my teammates. This is what I would like to see, you know. Yeah. Also, when I was talking to their coach, basically they say that in his in their team, one of the things that allowed Humanoid to be better is before last year, Humanoid was like the hard shot caller who had to just cut shot call all those rookies. But now apparently like El Yoya takes over some of that shit in the early game. And so now Humanoid can just lay in and then like take over sort of like later in the game when it's you as a team or whatever. So it sounds like they've even like upgraded the infrastructure of the team, like in terms of who does what and the balance of roles and stuff. Sounds like it's yeah. all working great. By the way, that's crazy if a rookie jungler can help be a shot caller for Fucking mad props, yeah. 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 It's insane. Our like early game is insane thanks to our like like everyone knows the game. They're like really good at it. So they're just destroying everyone. <laughs> like my team is really good at the moment. Yeah. It, it, I mean, and it wasn't always like that. I think that's uh, the thing that's been surprising. Like, er, earlier on in the season, I mean, I think El Yoya was, looked pretty consistent, but your bot lane didn't look consistent at all. Like, there was just so many yeah. games where we would look yeah. we would look at it and be like, what happened to Karzer and, and Kaiser? Because there'd, there'd be players where you'd expect... Kai Karzi and Kaiser to stomp. Like, when, when you saw them play against, yeah. like, Treats and Jesu, and then Treats and Jesu were killing them, like, five times in lane, like, what the <laughs> fuck is happening here? Like, it was so surprising. Yeah, in regular season, in regular season, we had some problems with bot lane because whenever, in scrims or in the official game, whenever it is level, so if whenever it's someone hits level two at bot lane, someone has to die. Like, from yeah. us, from enemy team, you know? It was like, there, this flip in this game, but, like, in playoffs, I think our bot lane has just, like, became insane. And they were like stepping up against you too. I think they played big role that we beat them, you know. So I'm really, I mean, I don't have anything to say. Like, well played to them because they overcome this issue they had. Yeah, I mean, it, it was surprising because a lot of the all ins that I saw them take in the regular season, I would just expect them to win. Like the the level two like Rel Tristana losing to level one Jarvan Callista. Like, who in their right mind would think that a Jarvan Callista would just e and and a Callista at level one is just going to be able to win that lane? Like. Yeah. At that timing, it's just like really unintuitive. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's super interesting. Solo killed. <laughs> I actually have a, a. I don't usually have these, but I've got a meta okay. related okay. question for you here, and I want to get both your takes. But I'll ask you first, Armo. So one of okay. the things I've noticed is in this particular split, like obviously everyone, it's like what LS is famous for. Everyone loves to go in depth on the champions and the, what's viable and the draft, etc. But this is one of the few splits where I actually felt like 
that a lot of that was totally on point. Like it did look like the, like the draft was incredibly important at the moment right now in League of Legends, as opposed to the last couple of years. In fact, one thing I think used to be cool when they had perks in G2 is there was so many, you know, so much variety as to where you could go in the draft. Right now in top lane, what do you actually think of your role in line of where it's at right now? Because it seems like those items have basically thrown off the balance of like the champions and matchups completely. So what is top lane supposed to do right now? And how strong of a role do you think it is? Hmm... I think there is like not really, really good really strong side of top lane right now. Like for example, it used to be like Sterax plus mm, what's the name of the like Bird you Jinger. use it and you gain HP. But yeah, like you just build these two items on every champion before the patch came. You know, it was top lane was really, really strong that meta because like no matter what champion you play, you just bought these two items and like you are OP. But like right now, I think there is just like counter picks have like a lot of important at laning right now and like not his best blind still in my opinion and other than that like there is enchanters karma lulu and stuff i don't think things are good at the moment but it's still playable for example scion i don't like orn orn is really weak at the moment probably yep. and i mean top pin is just like so so i would say yeah just so so right now do you, yeah. do you have you have you uh had the chance to watch any of the lpl yet so far, because one of the two top players that you're going to be playing against at, at MSI, either Jahu or, or Nuggery, I mean, they've been they've been crazy. Have they're you got to watch any of them? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're both really good. <laughs> yeah. Is there one that you'd rather face? Because like Jahu has a lot of these crazy picks that we'd never see anyone play top, right? Yeah. Like Tristana and I mean, Oriana I want to face picks. Nuguri because I already faced him in 2019, so I want revenge. Like, I want to see how much I improved, and I want to see how much he improved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he, he seems like a freak. I feel like like FPX as a team is probably like one of the most fun teams that you could have uh, sent to that tournament because they just play like no one else, you know? I feel like it, as long as you go into MSI with an improvement mindset, there's probably so much you could learn from playing against a team that's like that weird. I mean, that being said, you know, doing B versus, versus Humanoid in lane, that's a lane I can see Humanoid stomping him in, so we'll yeah. have to see. <laughs> yeah. See how, see, have to see how that goes. <laughs> Oh man, I, I actually uh, wanted to ask you also, like, uh, do you have any interpretation of like Domwon? Because th this is going to be a team that, that you're going to have to at least play a couple matches against um, yeah. at Worlds. Like, do you do you believe that they're as strong as they were last year? Have you got to watch them at all? Uh, I don't think they are as strong as last year, but they are pretty strong still. And now they have like they seem to have like. Mm, good compositions around the team. I mean, they seem to know that what their strong side of. I mean, their top lane is probably playing Scion all the time. Like mm -hmm. Khan, he yep. he likes to play Scion. So they're like both side mid lane team. I guess I'm not, like I'm not watching that much. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like watching. League no, it's, it's accurate. Much, they're, yeah. they're definitely a yeah. mid mid bot okay. team. Okay, so. I guess top lane gonna be like whatever, I guess. And we both sides gonna be playing against bot lane. And after the laning, I think Mad Lions is really strong as a five man. Like, I think our macro is pretty good. So I do think we have like good chance against them. Mm -hmm. Are you worried about like meta issues? Because I mean, we've been seeing pretty much only like like turbo chem tank meta for for junglers. It seems like that might be going a little bit uh, out of the way for, for MSI. If, if it's on 11.8, 11.9, like there's random champions that just got insane buffs like Mor Morgana, etc. Do you think that there's a, yeah, anything to be said there for like uh, meta problems for Mad Lions? I mean, I can't say anything about it because I don't know what's going to happen. Like, like anything can change, like anything can change, but we should adapt it. You know, this is like, this is what we do. Is there I mean, any change that you would them. want though? Is that like what what change could happen that might help Armor? Like, is there certain champions you buffs? want viable? Or... Yeah, what do you want? I need some Wukong buffs in laning, you know. <laughs> 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 I mean, to be honest, I don't mind playing anything. Like, I can play tanks, I can play carries, I can play enchanters, but I don't prefer enchanters that much because it's kind of boring, you know. Shielding Karzi, letting him to carry all, letting him to do all this job, you know. I want to be the guy who ca carries sometimes, so carry meta would be much better, but I don't know what Khan or Nuguri or Shao going to do to me, you know? <laughs> True. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Do you have, like, your own expectations for MSI? Like, is there, is, is there like, a, a placing that you think would be, like, acceptable? Anything lower than it would be not acceptable? Like, do you expect to at least be getting third, fourth, if not being in the final? 
Yeah, like I do think we are strong. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I mean there are, there are probably better teams than us, but we have like good chance against all of them. So when, yeah. when you were at Worlds last year, obviously your team was like a smaller region, so I know like it might be hard to get scrims with Koreans or whatever. Did you actually ever get to scrim against LCK and LPL teams? I mean, when you are like at that level, you prefer not to scrim against best teams because games are kind of over in game minute five because lanes are right. just totally so, sure. so yeah it's kind of a waste of time for everyone mm-hmm. so they're not because oh, I, I guess it kind of leads in then you sort of answered there like, i was gonna say like do you actually do people overhype those teams like in scrims are they just human can can you have a chance against them like because obviously here's the thing if it was g2 people would want them to say that they're gonna win msi so is mad lions yeah. gonna win msi should we expect we it i mean I don't know. I have like nothing to say. I have no idea. This is my first MSI. This is like my first international with this team. So I have zero idea, to be honest. I don't know what's going to happen. We might be champions. We might not be champions. So, yeah. Is there any fear like within the team of choking? Because I know the Mad Lions last year, like at Worlds, was famous for, for choking and playing. Right? Everyone expected them to top the group. So is there any like, you know, like vibes within the team? Like, hey, we better not choke this time. Or, you know. Does... No. I'm like... Uh... Like for me, uh, it can't be happen. Like I will not choke. I can like, like there is zero guarantee. Like it's guaranteed that I will not choke. And for my team, I think they all have like the confidence right now that we beat the LEC. So I don't think so. I think we're just going to go all in because like we have nothing to lose anyway. I mean, to be honest, we do, but (laughs) yeah. No, but like there's nothing to lose because like the expectations aren't as high for your team as they would be for another team. You know, like a team like G2 would probably have a lot more pressure going in because, you know, people are kind of still expecting like, oh, you were defending champions last time you played this tournament, you won. Like if you don't at least get to the finals, uh, you know, you, you probably have like, you know, degraded as a team. Yeah. For you, for you guys, getting to semis is, is like reasonable. If you get to semis and, and losing semis to like a LPL team or an LCK team. I don't think anyone's going to be flaming Mad Lions or, like, have, like, a negative mm-hmm. perception. Especially so. if you take a game or something, you know, as long as you make it look half decent. <laughs> <laughs> but I still, do, I still do think that we can be champions. I mean, I didn't watch the other teams yet. That's why I'm saying this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's good. What's your, what's your expectations, Thorne? I mean, listen, first of all, it is MSI, so there's only the best teams go. So in theory, if you don't make top four, you are actually fucking shit at League of Legends. There's only four regions anyone even gives a fuck about. So you have to make top four at a minimum. That's the minimum, okay. by the way. Okay. At that point, I no, agree no kind of with Dom. Like, it's not that you should win the match there, because realistically, you probably play at either LPL or LCK. But for me, it's more like how you play against them. Like, I wouldn't expect you to beat them, but I'd hope, yeah, like win a game, make it close, maybe do some interesting things in the draft to show that the team isn't scared you know you play your style etc like i actually think one small edge you'll have that koreans maybe wouldn't expect because if you don't know right one thing's koreans generally hate is when people do off meta shit like they're the kings of knowing what the meta is and playing mm-hmm. exactly within it right so i actually think you and kaiser with some of your weird picks could actually potentially throw them off for a game like that could actually help because they're not like they're not going to have seen some of these fucking flex picks and weird picks out of nowhere so i think that style works very well against koreans in my opinion yeah I mean, I guess... Uh, oh, yeah, you shout a lot. They play everything, man. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, for me, that's something that's going to be interesting, right? Because the, the other thing that, that is not talked about that much when we, um, when we have these international competitions is, like, how much choking actually goes on from, like, LPL and LCK teams. People think that because, like, an LPL team or LCK team wins that, like, they're playing at the normal level they play at. Almost always now, if you watch like the actual regional play and then you compare it to the the international competition, LPL teams and LCK teams are playing significantly worse in international competition. They're never as good as they were in the domestic final. I would agree. Like the last few years, especially, they always seem slightly worse actually when they go to the Worlds or the MSI or whatever. Like, Mm -hmm. because the problem is you watch some of the finals and you're like, holy fuck, this team's going to win Worlds. Like they can't be beaten. Yep. Like, those teams don't make it to Worlds. Like, I, I said this at Worlds. Mate, everyone who only saw top esports play at Worlds. I'm sorry yeah. you never saw top esports. They never arrived at that tournament, mate. Yep. JDG, the same team I was watching, you know. Oh, see, exactly, of course, yeah. Those two teams never arrived. It's mad. Yeah, and I think that's, like, the advantage that the West has is because, like, like when, when Western teams go on, like, people are just, like, happy if they have a good performance. And unless you have, like, an abysmal 0-6 in group stage as the first seed performance, you're not going to get flamed that hard. Like, no one's really yes. flaming Team Liquid for getting third in that group uh, versus Suning in G2. You know, it's an expected result. They went 3-3. Hey, they took a game off G2. They took a game off Suning. They did all right, you know? 
when Chinese teams and Korean teams go to Worlds, they feel like the pressure of, if we fail, cool. we are letting down our entire yeah. fucking country. You know, like, I feel like that is, is the advantage that the West has that no one really talks about, is the, the advantage of, like, being the underdog. Like, it feels so much better going into something and being able to just play your best League of Legends without any type of, like, pressure on your mentality. And this is something that I, I, I assume that Rogue probably dealt with in, in this finals. You know, like, they're the expected winners. Like, the whole hurdle was supposed to be, like, can they beat... G2, like the whole season was about Rogue and G2. They were at the top of the standings the whole way and Will Fnatic end up coming back. So the fact that like Rogue got to that finals, it felt like it was their time, you know, like they're the ones that were, that, that had the, the pressure of expectation. And, you know, well, to be didn't. fair, Armour is actually in a good spot there because he doesn't have to feel like, like as you're saying, if you're top esports, especially if you think of the nationalities, they, they don't even have the Koreans. Like if you're top esports and you're number one seed and you go to Worlds in China, like mate, the pressure on you, you really, you'd actually have to win. Like even coming second would have been failure. For Armour, it's not like he can tell him, like, look, mate, the, <laughs> the fear of you oppressing your shoulders, like, I come from Turkey, the fuck do I care? <laughs> <laughs> for him, it's, it's a win either way. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. It's always very mystery for me there you go do you think you turkey's win. underrated do you think that like some of the players there are, are underrated because like i mean you said you, you your team almost didn't qualify for playoffs in in 2020 right in 2020 summer your team yeah. almost didn't qualify for playoffs and then now you're you're an lec champion like do you think that the players there kind of have a bad rap because of the region and like individually they're pretty strong mm, i mean i wouldn't say that because i think we have like some strong players in tcl but we also have like weak players too so I mean, I think I wouldn't say bad, I wouldn't say good, but we have like really high potential players upcoming every year, kinda. So that's some that's good. Yeah. Just wait, because the part that a lot of people haven't thought about is, you know, it's basically rumored that the change at the end of this year is that because all those owners complained in LCS and they want to have, like, no import restrictions, the rumor is that Riot will just do what they did with Oceanic region with all the minor regions, right? So, like, Brazil, Turkey, all these leagues, Russia, in theory, you'll be able to, like, recruit these players to an LCS team and it won't count as an import slot. So the one people aren't thinking about is Turkey, for sure, because you just look over the last couple of years, a, couple, a few Good, really good players have come out of this region so in my opinion just like Oceanic is now all over LCS and Academy I guarantee you there'll be loads of Turkish players coming to LCS in my opinion I think at mm -hmm. a minimum in the Academy teams I think people if they if someone's an MVP might even get into an LCS team so it's, I'm actually quite interested because I don't know much about the Turkish players I only really knew about TCL from like following the Koreans that just played there like all the weird fucking old school <laughs> players all, they all do that at yeah. the end of their career for some reason they go to Turkey for like two years or something don't they so yeah. what do you think about this because I, I, there's a chance we're going to see a bunch of players in LCS that we've never seen from TCL. Uh, can you give us any thoughts? Like, who would be the people you would expect to get those spots if they do? Who are, like, the big names that we should look for? Yeah, if they no longer take up import spots. Hmm. Um, that's a hard question. <laughs> okay. I mean, that is, like, four and five teams that... I don't know. Let me think about it. I mean, probably the players from Supermassive. I mean, some of the players from Supermassive. Should I give the names or? Yeah, just tell yeah, us sure. the best like, players. I mean, because it will just be cool if in like two years, you know, people can yeah, yeah, look yeah. back and you reference some of these I think from Supermassive, it would be Ragnar and Kauri. And okay. it might be others as well, but I, I don't watch TCL that much lately. So, and this is what I remember. And from the Gulf side, there is oh, all right, big timer, fucking hell. So he's, he's only been in LEC for one split, and he goes, you know what, Dom? I don't really watch minor regions. I'm kind of an LEC champion. Yeah, 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 he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, fucking piss low regions. Like, I'm not gonna watch. <laughs> what the fuck? And like from Gulf side, there is my friend, which is my ultimate Balulu. I think mm -hmm. he have like chance as well. And like, there's many players actually, but. Yeah, man, you you better hope that thing happens because if if the wild card region suddenly like you, like you just don't count as an import anymore anywhere, you're gonna see a check from LCS. You're gonna you're gonna be thinking that there was an extra zero added on by accident. Like it's gonna be some crazy <laughs> shit. So that would be the the best thing possible for your career because even if you don't want to come to NA, it's great for negotiations to to have those types of <laughs> options. You know? so, yeah, I see, I see. Yep, for sure. I don't know. I, I think I think that would be interesting. I wonder if they'll actually do it. I feel like if if Riot decides to like make wild card regions count, I feel like they'll they'll maybe start with like some of like the worst performing wild card regions because T, like TCL is like pretty respectable as far as wild card True. regions goes. It's normally like yeah. one of the top ones. So I would expect like maybe 
like LLA players would then not be considered imports, especially because the That's way the Latin one, right? Yeah. The, the Latin one. And I, I, the reason why I have this mentality is because there's already like some of them in the, in like our region, right? Like we have like, oh, right. Sure. They play on the server. And stuff, yeah. I'm like sure. newbie and Jose Diodo and those players already play in, uh, on NA server. So by I feel way, like a lot of these are NA biased rules. No, I was just going to say, way, I, obviously that, that's the point. I was just going to say, this is a random piece of trivia. People might not know, right? You know, I'm apparently Dom, the only person who gives a fuck. It's obvious because of the role I play as the esports historian. I hate it when people treat like the old pro rankings, like frivolously and yeah. either do stupid troll picks that like you don't want double of to win. So you pick like, you know, the fifth best ADC and put him as like the second vote or whatever, or even worse is when people just pick their friends. Do mm-hmm. There was one that was mental. I put it on Twitter, but no one else. Yeah, I saw this. I saw it. There's a guy who works as media for some like Reset uh, MX. I I still remember. I believe it's from like Mexico or something. Some like Spanish language website, and he basically put fucking Jose Dado or whatever that name's guy is, and the newbie guy because there's just many people who, as far as I can tell, are either friends is or speak Spanish. He just put them both in the all pro teams. Yep. Like, why is this guy even going to vote? What the fuck is that? (laughs) That guy should literally, you know, like, here's the problem, right? I know people are going to say, but how can you mandate who people vote? You can, th- Let's be reasonable, right? It's one thing if someone goes, well, I think, like, it, they could even do an outside one. Maybe he wants a crazy one. Like, maybe he thinks, I don't know, the fifth best jungler should be in there. But, like, sure. he's picking players where, like, mate, even their own teammates would never tell you their fucking top three. Come on. That's yeah. ridiculous. You've gone too far on that. Come on. There's definitely ones where it's like, okay, this is clear, like, bias. Like, if somebody is, like, the 10th and it's like, when you, if you're being rational and you discuss like newbie's talent level, the most you could ever say is like maybe he's the ninth just because you think the ninth player is like or the the, the perceived ninth player is that much worse than him. There's no way you can say that he's the third best support in the league. You have you have Vulcan, Core JJ, and Sword Art in there already, right? Even if you think Sword Art's like not top three, you want to go for like Afro Boo because Afro had a good split or something. That makes sense. Exactly. To me. Going to this. If league, I wanted people to massively over or underrate players just to list on their personal relation where they like them, I'd just wait till Veteran doesn't want those core streams with them uh, with <laughs> Dominate here. I was going to say, I thought you were going to uh, want it. You were going to see if uh, Fion on Fire had his uh, top no, 10 world rankings. I thought listen, you were going for that. Listen, here's the problem. I love Fion, and after meeting him, maybe Dom's met him, he might understand what this means, wink, wink. After meeting him, I totally understand exactly why he is the way he is, and I no longer get that mad at it. But I do think, he. the problem with him, Dom, is he's like a, a, hot, a bad hot take factory. Like, he mm. just doesn't come with one every now and then. He always has someone that, again, is just like so out of whack to me. I'm like, fucking hell because the problem is he's so good at narratives i feel like he gets like lost in it sometimes you know whereas even though i love narratives like if it also feels like eh, this feels like it's a bit crawl bad you just sort of back off that one a little bit and you let it play out you know there was a, there was one that i incorporated uh armut in recently armut's team in recently where he was giving a take like lpl is not that far ahead of of lcs because last year <laughs> oh, come on come on <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. let me wait a minute, wait a minute let me just get ready for this <laughs> okay yeah Right, so the take was water. here. I'm just gonna. Say, so the take was LPL is not that far ahead of LCS because <laughs> okay. LPL actually only went four wins, two losses versus LP uh, versus LCS at Worlds. The two losses being TL taking a game off Sooning and Top Esports losing a game to FlyQuest. Right. So. What I it responded- feels like I'm actually strapped in like a fucking black ops site <laughs> and I'm being actually like, this is psychological torture right now. Like you're actually trying to like reach into my psyche and hit all the trigger points that could make me mentally break right now. <laughs> yeah. like, that is probably the stupidest rationale imaginable for comparing the regions. Yeah. Bearing in mind, they didn't play the same teams for a start off. Yeah. You know, like- <laughs> sure. And there's not the same, what, what about the fact that they're not the same players on these teams? Like there's, Exactly. There's, 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 there's no relevance to it whatsoever. That's literally what you call a non sequitur. That's like going like this right if mm-hmm. i just said to armor here like yeah you might have won lec but you know in the lgl one team won nine games in a row it's like hmm. none of those facts oh, even like interact okay. with it's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> they just miss each other so badly it's like what even is that yeah so then my so when i responded to him like clearly sarcastic my response was well then i guess mad lion should be expected to get shit on because they went they, they lost in play-ins of of worlds last year it's like completely not relevant it's not the same players <laughs> like it's not the same same team like what the hell like i i just really hate that type of thing and then also using facts from like another split of competition to justify this split of competition i feel like is just complete garbage like players can be real like it's so different it, the eye test alone is all we need for that one let's take one of the best lpl games and let's put it against pick any of the playoff series in lcs let's see how it holds up 
it'd obviously collapse instantly, wouldn't it, Fionn? Yeah, like, the eye test doesn't work at all, mate, does it? Mate, how could anyone... Like, I don't know when he made this tweet, to be fair. I'm sure it was, like, a few weeks ago. No, no. Like the play- it, was, it, was like two, it was, like, two days ago. Oh, God. Because the worst thing about <laughs> yep. that, Dom, is the yep. actual playoffs themselves. I kept saying this. I don't know how this still exists. Because, dude, even though they actually like, end up getting rolled out of the playoffs, TSM, somehow that team had the same quality as that one from summer last year, where they would be playing and they'd be in a position where they weren't even making, like, great moves to win. It's like they would just get to a certain point in the game and the other team would just wildly just into, into them for no reason whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like, Team Liquid did it every time they played them. I, I didn't understand it at all. Like, the, I thought the eye test on LCS, except for C9 in the final, was really bad. And even they got fucking smashed mm-hmm. in a couple of games. Like I thought the eye test for LCS was really bad this split. I don't know why pe- someone would pick this split to be the one where you make that case, yeah. you know. There's past splits where maybe you could say the best team was really good and better than the region. But, like, this wasn't the one to do it. Man. This was a pretty bad split to kind of, like, big up the region. This I think this the lowest average level of play i've ever seen from the top three in lcs yeah i mean i i think i think it was really rough but i mean the finals i kind of get an excuse for like i feel like c9 and and and, and tl like c9 looked much better before the final than in the final and if you for start sure. hearing some of the players talk about the circumstances i mean our can re- relate to this imagine if instead of playing in the lec studio for finals you're playing on a stage where the sun is glaring off your screen so hard you can't even see your timers <laughs> in chat that's mental, isn't it? Like, they've that's literally that's brought the classic that's excuse that's from American that's football that's where you go, the sun was in my eyes. And they managed to introduce it when we're playing video games. Whose yeah. idea was that? What, what, next riot? Next riot, let's just play in an open area and at Boston in about, I'm going to say January, and if it starts snowing, it'll just be like those fucking NFC championship games. Like, <laughs> games where just a snowed out area. Let's see. Maybe the team. Like, what is this? Whose idea is this? Like, why is the sun interacting with video gamers for fuck's sake? <laughs> I mean, it's perfect. Like, and the other thing is, like, you can just see, like, the players themselves, right? If you look at Sven during that series and you see how red he is, it's like, this is not like close. Like there has to be some level of like. I understand that like as a pro player, you're supposed to be able to play in different circumstances. He's just stuff literally like this. getting grilled gradually as he plays. Like just yeah. Like... But when did League of Legends become like an extreme sport? I know. Like what the fuck? <laughs> like th- like we're, it's supposed to still be a video game. Like let's play inside at least. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, I don't know. So that, that's at least I'm just figuring out how we make LCS better. You know, I've been doing that whole kick recently. Dom, <laughs> the about monster truck. Yeah, Here's no, the I'm new familiar. angle. Here's the new angle. What we need to incorporate is things that all the kids are loving right now. So you know everyone, you might not know this, maybe you do. Everyone online now is super into this shit that they do in Russia where they have slap contests. Have you ever seen this? Yep, thing? yep. And they like one knock guy, each other out. If you've ever seen the clips, you all know it, because there's one guy who's like, I don't know if he's the champion, but he's he's some, like, fucking whore or motherfucker out of Game of Thrones. And when he... Put it this way, the other guy always goes first, and when they slap him, it's like it's like when someone in a fucking movie tries to slap, like, Superman or something. You know, when they're like... Shh. But then the guy's just stood there, like, no reaction. Like, <laughs> yep. But then when the other guy slaps them, right, this guy is fucking... He's like Dr. Mundo. He's enormous, guys. Like, when he does his slap, it's like he doesn't even slap. It's like he's figured out how to, like, hit you with all of his weight behind the hand. And when he slaps you, your whole body just goes... Yeah, like, like collapses them. And they just, they grab them. They literally, no joke, get smelling salts to bring these guys back <laughs> And then they do round two. So I've thought it up, right? Here's how we're actually going to make LCS hype. <laughs> whoever wins each game in a best of five gets a free slap on one player of the other team of their choice. And tell you what, stakes get really... I, I, you know what? Finally, Marksy, I'd be hyped for some silver scripts then. Because at that point, probably half the team's dead, aren't they? Like, what's going to be going on? Like... <laughs> because <laughs> here's the thing I can't lie if that was a real rule the way you really dominate is you pick the worst player on their team who's choking and every game you win you just slap that one player so by the end he's just fucking wrecked and he's getting bodied in the game like I think this is how we take LCS to the top one that's a ratings win right there I would watch a slap context, contest between Armut and sure. Fudge I feel like Armut would slap the shit out of Fudge to be honest but who knows like Jesus Christ I mean, let's, if we bring it back to League of Legends for, for a bit, at least EU within context, uh, I, w- I wanted to ask um, Armut a little bit about, like, how the development is within uh, Mad Lions, because, I mean, one thing that Mad Lions is now famous for is developing players, right? You guys had yeah. four, four rookies last year. Team ended up performing way better. You added two rookies, and you're in, w- adding two rookies to a team that's already young. You guys were able to win the split. So is there anything, like, really special about the development of Mad Lions? Like, how does Mad Lions keep on getting such good results out of rookies is it just they pick good fucking rookies or is it just they no, do something within the no, no, no. the team to really I think like help people coaches, co- like i think the coaching stuff the probably best in eu i mean i don't know the other teams probably but i mean i just can't imagine that the other teams cannot be like better than this you know because this is like this should be the maximum you know they are really good at like as attitude and like 
what they teach, you know, macro wise and like as a person outside of the game, inside of the game, like they're insane. Like, and like we have like three or four coaches, three or four, yeah, like which is really insane. I don't know. Don't I don't know how know many. Much to say, like, yeah, <laughs> that is too much, man. Like, <laughs> okay, all right. It's like minions, there's just a whole bunch of them running around. <laughs> yeah, four or five, ten coaches. <laughs> well, they're all pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I mean, so uh, like, are they specifically like? Do you is there like a player coach for top lane or something? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like that. Like, there is not player coach for the top lane, but just I'm just saying to my coaches like that's what I want to improve on. For example, my laning the first four way. For example, this matchup, and they're watching the vaults or they're watching the scrims from what I played, and they're seeing the what I can't see, you know. So and they're just teaching me. That's super I mean, rare, though. Same, like, how yeah. can they see what you can't see? Because normally players are the best at like identifying those types of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for example, let's say I wanna, I wanna tell them that I wanna learn Poppy, you know, and they're watching Poppy for me, and they're teaching how they play Poppy even because mm -hmm. like they're really good, you know. They're really high, like time efficiency, you know. So they're like are compiling the footage. Stuff, okay. Are any of the coaching stuff for Mad Lions actually people who like play a ladder and are like high ranked or anything? Are they all just theoretical people? What what is the mix? Uh, one of them is old pro player, Cas. Yeah, oh, he, sure. he used oh, to yeah, play yeah. LXE a long time yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Other right. than that, no, I don't think so. Yeah, he played support though, so you know, support players they don't know anything about laning. It just is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what I was going to ask is, like, so are, are they, like, compiling, like, footage for you to, like, watch? Like, if you're like, hey, I want to play Poppy, in, like, in these matchups, are they just going out and finding, like, replays of pro players, like, playing Poppy and then just being like, okay, this is, like, what they do in these waves? Or how do how exactly yeah. do they go about coaching? That ty That's the type of, uh, like, VOD footage they I mean, compile? For example, I, I want to say them, like, for example, we play Scrim and I just fail the matchup that, like, say, Jace versus Nar, okay? And mm -hmm. they just see the LPL and SK. They're trying to find the matchup, and after they see, they're just telling me what Jace does and what Nar does, what happened in the game, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're just showing me how he do it. It's like, I mean, they're kind of do it, every, doing everything for me. Yeah, so, just, I'm just watching and trying to learn. Oh, that's, re that's really good. So that's like on the player yeah. development side. How do they like work with like all the personalities? Like, How do they incorporate you into the team so well? Because one thing I've noticed is that even if your laning wasn't good in some of the um, like early... Uh, games that you played in lec you were always somebody that was able to like find good tps and you're like pretty good about playing within the team so what was your like uh, how did you acclimate so well to the, the other players within the team hmm i think my team fighting and tp usage was always good before i even joined the lec okay i mean i think that was part of the the way that i also beat mad lines as well i think my tp usage and my team fight was the I mean, you shit on a Romeo in lane. Like, let's be honest, you shit on a Romeo in every lane. In like most of the lanes. I don't lanes. think so because I never thought that I should stump someone in the lane because I was just playing the Wukong anyway. Like, I was like not winning the matchup. The I Malphite was playing game versus Renekton. Actually, I was winning the Malphite versus Renekton lane. Yeah, that's yeah. a hard lane to win. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how did I win this to be honest. Yeah, I okay. have like no idea how did I win this. Yeah, <laughs> Thorne, do you have any idea how he won that? How did he outlane a Romeo? What could have happened? I mean, what I can't handle is none of them ever address it, Dom. They never even, literally, like, you would think fucking Shadow and Arome were Voldemort. They don't even say their names anymore. And the problem with that is Shadow was literally at one point considered an MVP candidate. And yeah. fucking Arome, the coaching staff themselves kept going on all the shows. Like, I think he'll be able to go carries and do that. And also, he will be great on land. And that's like, he failed once. Like, Remove him from history. <laughs> there never was a Arome. Like, I, think, I, don't, I don't get it myself, you know, because they hyped him so much, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he was, he was, I've, I've never seen, and, and the thing that was so crazy was that all the, the information that we heard from Matt Lyons last year, because we had a bunch of, like, your teammates on, uh, or, like, your your current teammates um, on on uh, this show, we had coaches, we had Peter Dunn, and everyone would always tell us, Arome plays this integral part in the team that no one else can replace, yes. like, even if he is weak side, what he does for the team is Completely irreplaceable. They said by even else. Alfari couldn't replace him because everyone yes. at the time thought Alfari was like the shit at the top. And they were like, Alfari might not even be better if he came in our team. It's like, by the way, I'll just say, does the eye test tell everyone that that worked out? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Alfari would be amazing at this team. What are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, I, look, I, I don't know if it would... Honestly, I don't know if it would go as, as well as Armin. I think that Armin was, like, a good fit. No, I mean, was, compared to a Romeo, though. Yeah, you know. exactly. Compared to a Romeo, I definitely think it would have been better. But, like, 
it's hard to judge now because now because I feel like you have like a good um mix of like better laning that Arome had, but then also like you still are able to like join the team when the team when the team needs it. And it seems like you kind of have that same like unbreakable mental that Arome had, where it was like no far no matter how far behind in a game like he was or you are, you're able to do something. Like you're always able to like do something in the team yeah. fight. So I feel yeah. like that's like pretty unique in a player. And I'm not sure if I would if I would say that Alfari has those intangibles. It seems like Alfari like needs to be ahead to like carry the game I think or like Zane be relevant. Is really good. But uh, that was what that's what I was thinking when he was in EU anyway. Like I think he was the the top 3 laning players in the LEC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. D did you have like an opinion of Arome before you played him at Worlds or like how good did you think Arome was? I just I was like not watching LEC that time because I was not in LEC, you know. I I, I really don't like watching League. <laughs> I just watch the League that I'm playing, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, so, that's fine. But I met him in solo queue sometime. Actually, maybe no, no, I never faced him in solo queue. Actually, yeah, you're too no. high rated. You were like rank three at the time. There's no <laughs> chance he could have got in your games. <laughs> do you spam okay. the game a lot in solo queue? Is that what you do instead of watching? I mean, I don't. Yeah, I guess I'm playing solo. I, I prefer the playing more than watching. I mean. I was watching the, some Elise games, but it was usually G2 because watching League is just not entertainment for me. I prefer the playing. Yeah, that's Fair hey, enough. that's how I was too. We'll see how you are in ten years. After ten years of playing solo queue, you prefer watching more than playing, <laughs> at least in my experience. Sure. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, we'll we'll see how how it ends up going. It's um, the best thing, Dom. If you're watching a game and it's terrible 10 minutes in, you yeah. press the X in the corner and it's over. <laughs> if you're playing a game, if you leave, they fucking punish you. It's garbage, isn't it? Like, <laughs> oh, I'm just trapped in this one for 25 more minutes. There's no there's no worse feeling in esports. I've always said this. Because other games aren't like that. Like in Counter-Strike, for example, like the money resets every few rounds. I get the best weapon again and yeah. I have a chance to be even again. Like in League of Legends, there's no feeling worse than 10 minutes into a game where you just know you're trapped for half an hour and you can't win. It's the worst yeah. feeling I've ever had I mean, playing true. any game. Especially for top lane like top lane is like it's one this, of the worst you get I, banned by the jungler 24 7 yeah i mean you could just be like hey like hey jungler i need you on this wave like this is the wave that you need to be here or something bad will happen and then they just don't show up and you die and then you're just fucked for the entire game like yeah yeah it seems rough is do you have a different mentality in solo queue now because it's, it felt like last season at least because i watched actually like, some of your solo queue replays it feels like when players are not in the lec they have this mentality where they like really play for elo like they'll do anything at any cost to like get high rank on the ladder because that's how you get noticed now that you okay. are like high rank on the ladder or like now that you are in lec do you still have that same mentality towards solo queue or do you kind of play solo queue more for like i want to practice certain champions or i want to improve in a different yeah, way yeah i'm playing for more like practice at the moment so i don't take it seriously because right now i think solo queue is not very good and if i try to win i'm getting like a bit toxic you know i'm getting a bit toxic behavior into some people so i prefer to just practice and like and make my hand warmer what don't you like about solo queue at the moment what's the problem i don't know i think the, like it's not how it used to be that's how i feel like it's like less it's just worse do, than do you, it used to be. Are you think? Do you think that it could just be because you got better, or do you think that it actually is worse? Because like maybe you've just yeah, improved it's just a lot. Worse. It's just worse. No, I think it's just worse. Okay. I'm actually when I think about it, I never thought. I never thought like you said, but I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe yeah. between like maybe gap is just too much between me and the other players. I'm that good. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, he was humble for the first hour and a half. Now he's Bro. gonna he's gonna break it out. You know, then we're gonna get to see the armored ego. I mean, it, it must be really hard to be humble when you play LEC for your first split and you just win the whole thing like that. I mean, it seems like that would be a difficult task. Most players uh, have like ego before they win anything. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, but I still think like there are just more, many more better players than me, even in my lane, even in the game, like LEC. So, I mean, I won the championship. That, but that doesn't make me the best player. That doesn't make me oh the best God. top player. Thorne must love this guy. Thorne must love this guy already because he's been trying to preach Grenadians. this for the last like, yeah. <laughs> like 11 years. No, it's not, by the way, it sounds like actually he has a pretty reflective opinion of himself. Yeah. Like most players by default tend to think they're like twice as good as they actually are just because, you know, they think like, oh, my best year, this is who I really am. <laughs> they don't think like what the average level of the performance is. Like, it's part why they get butthurt about people like us on shores. Like they always, like half the time, you know this, Dom, they'll start saying stuff like, yeah, but in scrims, it's like, we haven't seen the scrims. How could I know what you're doing in scrims? Like it's irrelevant to me, <laughs> isn't it? So true. loads of people are like that. What I want to ask him was this then. If you're, if you're giving so many props to all the other players, right? Aside from, like, look, we've already said wonder or whatever. 
give us some thoughts on some of the other top laners. Like, is there a top laner in LEC that's like underrated? Like, no one ever Gen uses guys or props. Yeah, is there someone mm. that stands out? I think as I think I think I would say Broken Blade, but I don't think he's underrated as well. But I think he's pretty good in lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, other than that, I think like the three of them, like Wunder, Odamne, and Broken Blade, this two is really good. I think. What do you think of Blipple? Like, it's crazy that Blipple isn't even considered in there, right? Like, every every single other season, you'd say um, Blipple's yeah. number two or number three. And now we're not even putting him in, like, yeah, top four. Yeah, but, like, I played in one split, and he wasn't seeming that good this year. So mm -hmm. I just didn't count on him because I never saw him that he's playing really good, you know? Like, I know he was really good in last year, but I just, when I played, he was not that good. So I don't know. I mean, this year, he didn't perform that well. Yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting too because uh, what what people used to say is that he was like one of the harder laners to to lane against because he would play mm -hmm. like more mind games. He would go for like trades that other people wouldn't go for, and yes. there'd be like a sense of volatility um, in the lane that other players didn't didn't have. Did you feel like he was more like reserved, like he kind of just played like everyone else's split from your experience? Uh, yeah, I guess, but it was like weird because they had the last pick of red side. But they were just not counter picking the top lane, which was really weird because mm -hmm. he was like he was just counter picking himself at the uh, red side. I just and like I don't know what to say to be honest. That's yeah. pretty next level counter picking yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe he was just preparing himself for the hardest mode, you know. Yeah, that's how you improve. I've heard of people doing this in scrims before, you know. <laughs> yeah. solo queue, so <laughs> this is his, this is preparation. He's on that next level. Cause you know what, but Sp Spring yeah. Split doesn't matter, right? So like he's he's just preparing himself for summer. Mm. <laughs> but I think like Fnatic had like really huge problems that also affected PvP, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what what to think about it. What, do you think that what do you think the problems were with Fnatic then? Like what, like obviously we saw moments of over aggression, but do you think that they just like lack discipline or? Mm, I I cannot know about that, but I think. The overall, their bot lane was doing a pretty good job because I think they were holding the whole team, to be honest. They were just stomping every, any, every bot lane. But I think the top side, top mid jungle, they had some problem. I don't know what was it, but they had pro probably like they had, they had to be problem there, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's a big fall off, right? Like we saw Selfmade was somebody who we all had as like the best jungler in LEC for the last year. Um, even better than than Yankos up until like finals, you know, like you'd always give Yankos credit for performing when it counts. But yes. when you put them against other players that fall like Selfmade would just stomp them harder. I feel like Selfmade, this just, this just wasn't his meta. And, you know, Reckless said in an interview um, a while back, or I think it was during like pop quiz, he said that Selfmade in general was the type of player that had like issues when he wasn't playing carry meta and you know we fall saw a full split of turbo chem tank meta it just felt like he wasn't the same player so that just makes me wonder like how limited he is as a player and if he's going to be able to to improve i mean i guess it goes the other way too you know like do you have any worries about i mean i know el yoya has been like a greatest player like before in in, in the past yeah. but do you have any worries about like potentially like a different meta affecting your team like a I mean, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I didn't play that long. Yeah. So, I don't know who can play the best. I mean, I can do anything. I think Humanity can also do anything. I think Elio already showed that he can do anything. And, like, there is... Bot, like, bot lane is just... Bot lane just bot Every meta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was, like, some AP meta bot lane, actually. That ADC is playing, like, Syndra. Hey, was fine at that. Yeah. At I least we know he's definitely problem. actually integrated into the Mad Lions culture here, Dom. Because as we referenced earlier, with listening to them for one year tell us that Romeo was really good on carries and, you know, could do everything. Like, apparently, like, most of the team can just do everything. Yeah, Dom, the difference so is now I involved. actually... Yeah, what? what are you worried about, man? They can play everything? Don't worry about it. I mean, the difference <laughs> is now I actually kind of believe it. I mean, he only had two champions in the fucking finals, but never mind that. He can play everything. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, I have, like, huge champion pool, like... Dino dinosaur nar, the astronaut nar, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the one, different one of the things I do. One of the things I do, Armor, is like I will banter people, but I'll never like totally lie outside of jokes, obviously, right? So what the compliment I would give you, because I believe, right? I don't even believe in a concept in English called white lies, where you say like a lie to like not hurt someone's feelings. Like I wouldn't say congratulations, Armor, like you know you guys were like amazing and you won the finals, and you were the better team. I would just say like congratulations on getting away with that robbery against Rogue. Like listen, you got you got away scot free, you didn't get caught yeah. in the end. Like you know, and yeah. you guys listen. As we say in English, we have a saying in English culture possession 
possession is nine tenths of the law. You have the trophy. It's too late now. They need a court case, some sort of review, like maybe have a drug test on fucking the draft for one of those games. <laughs> Find out if Larson, you know, if something was going on, he got problems at home, son. Like, or do I'm there? Were you aware that the final wasn't against G two? Like, this isn't like an exhibition game or something. Like, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of investigation <laughs> needs to be done. But at the moment, you got away with it. So I always love movies where you know they do a heist and then they get away with it. The robbers and then the cops don't catch them. So <laughs> well played, well done. Thank how convinced you, are uh, Thorin? How convinced are you? Do, do you th do you think? Like oh, not at all, not at all, mate. I don't give a fuck. Here's the problem I have, right? Is mm -hmm. I actually think, I'll put it this way, I'll say this definitely. I do think Mad Lions showed me way more in the playoffs than I thought from the regular split. Like, I yeah, thought some sure. of those best of ones towards the latter half of the split were like, you know, some teams played badly against them. Like, I was doing that a bit. Playoffs, I, like I said, like, mate, every, every series except the finals was clean as fuck. They were actually legitimately better than every team they played. Mm -hmm. The problem is this. Like, I do think, I'd love to, I'd love to see that final played a few more times because I feel like Rogue... On paper, I thought with a better team going into the final, but I, I do think this final showed like some of the flaws of them like, in intangibles, like psychological components yeah. and stuff. They seem so, like chokers. They just seem yeah, like chokers. Yeah, they do just quite up. frankly. They're not hating on them. Like that's why the, like the euphemism I use, they're called front runners because like if they're ahead, yeah, they fucking win the game. But like until like, game five, clearly the they game. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, game five. They're not the team I can rely on to win, put it that way. So I, I, what I think is cool for me now is, like I say, I think summer's wide open. Because think about these teams that you've got, right? Fnatic, in theory, almost couldn't be worse with those players. So I could see a world where they get slightly better or maybe even make a player <laughs> change and suddenly they're in the mix. Schalke, like I said, actually, I think it's a very well-coached team. And I think always have been. I think actually their problem is they just don't have the raw talent to like win LEC. I just don't think they do. Then they've got obviously G2. Like that team could literally change almost nothing. The meta could change. They could all play solo queue a bunch and they might just be the best team. Then the last two teams are the two finalists. Rogue has mad potential, but chokes for some reason. And Mad Lions, if anything, showed that they've, they've managed a bunch of times that coaching staff to get a really good read on the meta. So I'm very interested to see what happens in summer. I could see it going a whole bunch of different yeah. ways, including Mad Lions, maybe it's the better again. I mean, I, I tweeted this out at the beginning of the season, but this is, this is in my mind, the best thing that could have happened for LEC. It's a team for like sure. Mad Lions winning. Because how boring would it have been if G2 played, like, they swap around all these players, G2 just plays against Fnatic again, stomp them 3-0 in finals again. It makes you feel like you don't even care about watching. But actually, like, a, a lot of people were concerned about the viewership. They were like, oh, well, the viewership is going to be dog shit for this because no one actually cares about Mad Lions. No, European fans actually just, like, want to watch, like, LEC. Like, people have now became fans of LEC and not just fans of like G2, which I feel like it's kind of the sweet spot. And that's what LCS has been lacking is that there's like, there isn't that much hype for the league itself. There's just hype for the best teams. So, I mean, I actually think that it's been really successful overall for LEC. I've been pretty happy with the performance and I'm actually happy that, that Mad Lions won. I mean, Mad Lions or Rogue winning, I would have been happy because I think that either way it, it makes a statement and it's actually like, it's not like a team had a fluke performance and beat them a team actually won the whole league with double elimination. So I also like that I Mad Lions it. won because I also agree. I think their coaching staff looks like they do a fantastic job for the last two years. Like, I, I, I don't know that much about the role coaching staff. It's one element I'm actually not that familiar with. Like, what do they do? What's their philosophy? They don't appear on shows, unfortunately. So with their team, I actually think they're a team that, like, it's about, like, the players and the server, and then they're trying to figure out what to do. Mad Lions, as far as I can tell, seems like a team that, like, the philosophy for the game comes from the coaching staff. So they look like they do a great job. Yeah, that, yeah, that's really impressive. That That's really impressive when you see a team that, like, you can see the improvement throughout the split. That's what I love to yes. see is, like, the, the problem that I have with LCS is, like, it feels like there will be times of improvement, but when there's time of improvement, it goes away so fast that you don't know if people actually improved or they just, like, happen to do the right thing in the game. They just had, like, the right feel within the game because that could happen, you know? Like, you could just play a game and you just, like, play well within the game and you do things that are good, but you don't actually, like, have the concept down you just feel like in the game that that's the right thing to do. It feels like when you watch like Mad Lions, it does seem like they consistently improve, right? Like they consistently improve throughout the splits. The players get better over time. And I feel like that has to be a testament to the coaches at some point, especially when you see it done with multiple players. You know, like if it was just last yes. year's lineup, you could be like, oh, well, maybe they just got lucky. All these players were just fucking good yes. in regional leagues. They put them all together. They got the, the results they wanted. Now you see El Yoya and Armut added and you see the improvement between El Yoya and Armut over the course of the split. That's another, like, uh, you know, that's another plus to the coaching staff. So, if anything, Armut, you're carrying your coach's career right now. Congratulations. Like, yeah, you're really doing it. You're making your coaches. I mean, know? they're pretty good, so I don't mind, you know. <laughs> they, they, they deserve it, for sure. They're really insane. Yeah, they're really insane.
I mean, it is what it is. Thorne, do you have anything else you want to ask before we uh, wrap it up here? I know we said like we're uh, at an hour and a half for our moment. I mean, if you want just a random piece of interest and trivia, maybe he has a thought on this. Just like I asked earlier about playing with Kakao, if you go and look, like Armut directly knows how many mad Koreans have been in the air. Because I had a look on here, right? He's played with, obviously, who was eventually his coach, GBM. Gak Mon was his mid laner at one point in time. He had mm -hmm. Pilot, who used to be the AD carry of Jair, yeah. if people remember yeah. back in the day. Obviously, he had Kakao now. Snowfire. If you go even further back, he had fucking Ninja. He had Snowfire as a support. He had Ninja... <laughs> Uh, the old mid laner yeah. of fucking TDK slash Renegade. Like this guy's played yep. with loads of people who are in LCK and OGN. So, yeah. like, what do you? What is it? What is TCL like in that regard? Because a lot of foreigners don't realize how many like Europeans and like, Koreans come to the league, right? I think in 2018 in TCL there was like some Korean meta that every team was kind of getting two Koreas minimum, minimum, you know. So there was this hype in TCL, and the I think the region the TCL was really fun to play and fun to watch in 2018 because of this imports like we had even like accepted malrang in our like in our league so it was like really good that year it was like insane that turkey getting so much imports with their money i mean it's also about the turkish economy because turkey economy was like really insane and not really insane but right now it's really bad but at 2018 it was decent you know so pe mm -hmm. teams were like teams can afford it but like right now, it's kind of hard for them to get it. Yeah, interesting. Did you? What was your interpretation of like the quality of play with the Koreans that were joining? Like, did you think that they would be better? I know that that was something that I had when I was uh, playing within 2015. Like, I there was a huge Korean exodus. That was like the huge year where like you had a bunch of world champions joining, and I was always like, oh, they're just like they're just normal players. Like, I wasn't like, oh shit, they're the next level of, yeah. of, of player. Did you feel the same way? I mean, the Korean players I had was the kind of best players. In like among the Koreans in our league, so I wouldn't say I was really happy because like I mean, but they were doing their job, you know. Mm -hmm. So I cannot complain also, but I cannot say they were really, really good also. Yep. Was was there actually? I mean, there was a story about when I think you were playing with GB, GBM that he was like hard stuck in like diamond on on US. Was that yeah, actually a yeah, thing? Yeah, he was diamond four or diamond five. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? He, he was playing in the Turkey server. Yeah. Do you, do you well, care about that? I have heard like he's someone who like when he was in the West at least didn't have very much motivation for like playing individually or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like not uh, giving effort to solo queue. He was just trying new stuff that he's just he's just thinking something and he's just going to do it in solo queue. Like Nuno Mid, for example, and he was just calling us. Oh, Nuno Mid is really good, guys, because I can clear the wave at like in one second or something like that. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you have like an expectation of solo queue from your teammates like as a player? Because I know some players don't care; they don't matter. Like they don't care what rank you are as long as you try hard, like in the game and you perform on stage. Is there like a certain rank where you expect your teammates to be able to like be at all times? Like, are you like if you're not challenger, you know, you're not putting in enough effort? Like, how how do you feel about like solo queue? I mean, I think they we all should be challenger. To be honest, if we are not challenger, that means we are not playing solo queue that much because like all of the players can easily reach challengers. I mean, it's not that hard to get challenger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The only thing good. is, you got to tell your boy Broken Blade. Look, he won the little kids championship over in LCS, but you've got an LEC big boy <laughs> trophy now, so he has to get on your level in one yeah. split. You know, Johnny. Yeah, biggest, uh, better, better Turkish oh. top wins. You know, Turkish yeah. top. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he got Penta against you too, so it's also not bad. You know, <laughs> <laughs> personal accomplishment. All right, well, I mean, that's normally where we cut it off. Is there anything that, that you wanted to talk about that you didn't get a chance to on the show, Armut? If not, we could just end it here. I remember some um, power ranking thing. I was like 68 points or 70. Was this Dom's? Was this no Dom's way on mine. Holy. No, no way. You're Maybe in. it was on veterans that you were 6 to 8. I, I would feel yeah, more I plausible. Guess was, yeah. Okay, let me, I was like... What was he on yours, Dom? I'm, I'm actually... You, I think you I'm had him 5th right or now. something. Look it up. You had him 5th, I'm going to guess. What do you um, do I had Armut. Oh no, I had him seventy-four. <laughs> I had him as a seventy-four. Well, well, how high? Okay, you, okay, if okay, I was to rank okay. one to ten, where was he in the in the rankings in the league? Though I was at the lowest or something. No, no, his second. I lowest. was the worst player in Elite. <laughs> <laughs> you were the second nice. lowest. It's true. It's true. Nice. You're the second lowest on my. This Wait a minute! After, you just said earlier, Dom. Uh, you were like. 
He was like, I heard there was some power ranking when I was fifth, eighth. You were like, wasn't mine. You were ninth in mine, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's worse, Tom. What are you? Wait, you gotta, uh, go on, wait did I say thoughts. that earlier? Wait, hold on. What, did yeah, I say like earlier? Didn't he, didn't he just say like fifth, eighth? Well, it wasn't mine. It's like, no, yeah. so, I, so I had him in my original one. I had him like top five. And then after his first four weeks, I dropped him to 70. But I had a bunch oh, of them. See, in the, right. Like he was like around like all the, it was like him, Gen X cries. Oh, and it's like, so he was 75, they were 76. Yeah, so it's like yeah, a negligible he, difference. Right? He was 74, Cries yeah. was 75, Gen X was 76. This was after week four or, okay. or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought I thought Armour, I mean, I even t- tweeted it out I mean, he, when he muted me on, on Twitter. I, <laughs> I thought there was like a lot of situations where I thought Armour's leading was just not good. But I mean, over the course of the split, I thought he got better and better. So, you know, if I was to revise these these rankings, he'd definitely be but, in the uh, top four. But are you just ranking people for laning? Because that is much more than laning. Yeah, no, I, I am trying to like judge overall but i think it's really hard when you're like on a, a good team because like there's there's players that i feel like are good but it's hard to, to like judge how they are outside of laning like for example like gen x like it's really hard to judge gen x because i feel like his team is normally so behind that like i mean he does really well but like gen x how high can i put him with like how bad his team is that's like that's why it, ranking players individually is so hard it's like a very difficult exercise if you actually start like yeah, trying to actually do it. i see because like then you talk midlines is a good team they were always ahead and armut is always losing his lane yeah right yeah okay so I he see. has so uh, so like my mentality no would be problem. like he has I'm... you just mute you again like no <laughs> <laughs> you're muting me again after this okay <laughs> But for for me, it's just like those are those are the really difficult things. But these were done. These were done pretty. Actually, it might have been after only week three. It was definitely in the first half of the split. Maybe it was week four or week three. I ended up doing these um, power rankings. I know they're super off because I have um, I've Whippo at a ninety and I've Wonder at a ninety three. And I fucking hell, what Kool Aid were you drinking when Whippo got a ninety? A ninety. I mean, I think that he's like I think that before. I mean, that's maybe... like the ceiling to Whippo to me. Like, listen, I, I agree. I think he could be amazing in certain games, but like the problem with you being a ninety is that you got to be a consistent player if you're going to be ninety. Surely. Well, like so, for example, uh, for comparison, right? I had like uh, I had Humanoid at, at, at a ninety. I had Humanoid actually really high on mine. Um, Humanoid was at a, a ninety. Caps was was the highest player I had in both either NA or EU. I had Caps at a ninety seven. Like um, okay, I had Reckless at a ninety six. This is like when they're winning all the game or at ninety five rather. Uh, Self made was still a ninety three. Where like now, right now, I don't even have him as like top four jungler. So I mean, yeah, a lot has changed, man. I got I actually got to revisit it. Thank you for bringing that up, Armud. I'll do that as a stream. You know, I can <laughs> no I can problem, do an man. LEC revised player rankings. That that sounds like it would be a a, a fun idea here. But yeah, uh, appreciate you being here, man. I thought it was a good conversation. Congratulations yeah. on uh, winning Thanks the so LEC Championship for 2021 Spring, and good luck in MSI. Thanks for being here, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye.